All right, we're live now. All right, all right. Henry, are we on? It says live. Well, uh, we on the closing argument. We start the show is on live, so we're back on the closing argument. Today is uh Monday, March 18, 2024. It's good to be back on the closing argument. And uh, sorry we started late because of didn't you were giving the news, but we are live, we are on, and hope to get it going. And so, let's call this get a show going. Um so uh no, no, the, the parent no one's in studio to produce tonight so we gotta go ahead and continue to go on um so is our guys here our guys on our guys there Okay, Thompson B. Boss, you're the first guy from Australia, Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Thompson B. Boss. I think we are live. We gonna move on. Uh apparently. Guys, it's good to be back. I see Edwin Croy is there. Yes, we're ready. Let's get it going, buddy. Uh, Super new. We ready, buddy. Are we are we all set on the show? Uh we on live. We the show is on. The show is on live. We're on. Chairman is watching. Emmanuel Mann is watching. Evan Kura. So we on, guys. So let's start the show. Come on, let's start. Yes, let's welcome uh Thompson B. Boss from Sydney, Australia. But I think this call is an important call. So you continue. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, welcome, guys. We, we you know how tech from having series of technical issues, but we are back on the closing argument. We'll be back on live today, and uh, we're looking forward to have a great show. Thank you for joining us. If you are joining us, uh, just share the show, man. Share the show. If, if you're back, share the show. But uh, well, we're looking forward to, to, to have a great show here today. So keep sharing the show, man. Uh, as you come on, uh, keep sharing it. I know it was almost difficult to get it on today, but uh, yeah, we are. Just uh, keep sharing the show. Keep it going. Uh, uh, Emmanuel Ma, good to see you. Uh, Jack and T and all, all you guys, is good to see you, man. Just, just share the show. We are back on the closing. I came in today. 
We're going back live. We are on radio as well, Troop FM and Hot FM. We are here. So uh, we encourage you to 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 join and keep it going. You know, we there's been a lot of technical issue the last few weeks. There's been a lot of technical issue going on, but we are back on. And uh, we just wanted to let you know that the closing acumen is back. But there's a lot of things happening in Liberia. There's been a lot of appointment in government. Uh, the last week, uh, President Baraka have made some appointment. We have seen the resignation of the UP uh, former chairman, Monaba Bonlu, and then we saw the emerging of a new uh, a pressure group uh, headed by Emmanuel uh, uh, Mulu. We a lot of things, a lot of things to unfold here, guys. A whole lot is taking place, so we we are looking forward to to bring it to you as we we move forward on the show today. We are looking forward to just uh, bring it to you and share with you what's been taking place. But there was a lot of appointment that was made uh, in Gulfman. Uh, uh, President President Joseph Newman Boaka. Uh, a lot of appointment. Uh, let me let me see what I can put on the list of those appointed just a few days ago. Uh, it's a long list of appointment of people. Uh, uh, President made some additional appointment. Let me begin with that list there and see. So. Uh, 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 see who, who, who was appointed today. Uh, I'm trying to still download the list, but Henry, how you doing? How you doing, Henry? Uh, so yeah, good to have you back on the team. They are already prepared, uh, so no time to waste. Uh, too many things to talk about, so don't yeah. give it away. My name is Heron Jarai, alongside of man, Elijah Zizi. We are here pushing you up to the hour. Don't go there, but we'll take back of our team song to join the panelists. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm just trying to get this. Okay, so let me. What is going on? Are we okay? Are we okay, Henry? Okay. Well, Henry, the line is close argument team song, though. Where we get that song from? We get also not reggae. Yeah, that's a tough reggae. Yeah. Reggae song. <laughs> so. That's the way we open uh, the closing argument here in La Brother. That's the team song. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. Well, Henry, what's what's the what's the latest on the ground, man? Let's start with the news. What's on the ground? Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be back again. Uh, happy that we are back on the on Monday like this. Uh, too many things to talk about. Like that, everybody was saying, talking about son uh, new appointment that uh, His Excellency Joseph Yuvan Boaka. Uh, we're seeing uh, people trooping in. Uh, to the CDC, we're seeing resignation, all of these things. So, I hope that we talk, we talk about some of them. That let's get to it. Let's get to some of the appointments made by the president. Uh, quite recently, uh, quite recently, I don't know if you guys would like be too care that we read it out. Yeah, uh, uh, I got it. I have to list here. Let me just go ahead. They say, uh, Executive Mansion, uh, the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Joseph Nima Baka, has constituted governing boards of several state and enterprises, institutions, commission, and agencies of government. These appointments were applicable uh, and take immediate effect. Those appointed to the board and institutions are Liberia Civil Aviation Authority. Mr. David Farhar, Chairman, uh, Minister of Transport, First Chair, Minister of Finance and Development Planning, Member, Ms. Chimama Wolokali, Member, Honorable Bala Zeze, Member, Councillor Charles Kamo, Member, 
LCAA Director, General Secretary, Liberia Electricity Corporation, Minister of Finance, Development Planning, Minister of Mines and Energy, Minister of Justice, Reverend Dr. Samuel Reed, Member, Mrs. Elizabeth Matu Tutman White, Councilor Carlos Smith, Member, Ms. Nimadu Richardson, Member, James Nigana, Member, and this is the Managing Director, Secretary, and non voting member of the board. Then have the Bunk County Technical College, Dr. Charles Molubar, Chairman, Joseph S. Koyana, Co Chairman. President of the BCTC Secretary, Abraham Nafo Kali, member, Teresa Voka, member, Honorable Johnny Kwehe, member, Honorable Robert Flomo, Woma, member, House of Representatives, Bishop Minikon Nimpa, member, John Kamu, Gamma Kali, member, Superintendent of Bond County, member, County Education Officer, member, Asada Mittal, Liberia member, China Union member, and the director of NCHE member, Minister of Education ex officials, Liberia Petroleum and Regulatory, Mr. Jacob Kobakali, Chairman, Councilor Kau Doli, member, Dr. Mamu Rogers, member, Dr. Asumana Kuma, member. Mr. Louis Pope, member, Director General, ex official of the board and secretary. Uh, renewable, R Rural Renewable Energy Agency. Mr. Doris Watson, member, Liberia Telecommunication Corporation, Afrida Tama, chairperson. Antonin George Down, member, Gloria Menja, member, Minister of Post and Telecom. Jay Richardson, Nidor, board, Nador, board secretary. Uh, National Transit Authority, Ben Hollison, Chairman, Arthur Gilly K, Member, Cornelia K. Green, Wesley, Member, Minister of Transport, Member, Minister of Finance, uh, 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 Member, Managing Director and Secretary of the Board, National Insurance Company of Liberia, Noka, uh, Joseph Sando Momalu, Chairman, Minister of Finance Planning, Member, Minister of Health, Minister of Transportation, Ashimana K. Jala, member, Mamasa Kamara Janet, member, Liberia Agency for Community Development, Peter Kamel, Chairman, Minister of Finance, Co Chair, Minister of Gender, Minister of Internal Affairs, uh, Maria Vavli, member, Maddie Hutch, member, Marma Brown, member, National Social Security and Welfare Corporation, French, Mr. Francis Capet, Chairperson. Dr. Tukbanan Tipotem, member, Firestone Plantation Corporation, member, Fred Bass, Golika, member, Mrs. Eileen Nima, member, Mrs. Miltra Rees, member, Comfort Sawyer, member, Abla Kiribeku Williams, member, Vama Givler, member, Samuel Mitchell, member, Edwin Gwildy, member, Dewitt from Bamboo, secretary. John F. Kennedy Medical Center, Minister of Health, Minister of Justice, Minister of Finance, uh, member, uh, uh, and the Dean of the Medical College, Associate Member, uh, the President of the Liberia Nursing Association Member, uh, Chief Executive Officer, JFK Board, Councilor Azetta Wesley Member, Madam Clary Roberts Member, Reverend Emmanuel Johnson Member, Mr. Tony Hedge, member, Reverend Pei, Bank No member, National Public Health Institute, Dr. Stephen Kennedy, Chair, Dr. Angela Benson, member, uh, Dr. Samuel T. Dopo, member, Dr. Sao Siawata Kamano, member, Minister of Health, member, Minister of Finance and Development Planning, uh, member. Minister of Justice, member, Ministry of Agriculture, member, University of Liberia, member, Director of General Service, as I serve as Secretary and non voting member. I mean, it's a long list of board members. Uh, I think we, 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 we're going to stop here and just uh, try to begin the show. But uh, I just want to mention uh, uh, some of the folks also appointed just uh, uh, the other day, I believe, on on March 18, 
he said. This is March 18. The president of the Republic of Liberia, Joseph Bonga, made additional Joseph Bonga made additional appointment. Anthony F. Augustine C. Tama, Deputy Director for Technical Service, Liberia Aviation Authority, Manalopu G. Kanaka, Registrar, General Cooperative Development Service, CDA, Mana Ewina J. Boima, Deputy Registrar for CDA, uh, Madam Augusta M. Watson, Deputy Registrar for Gender Youth Promotion Program Development Cooperative, uh, agency, Mr. Funo Edwin Tisdale, Deputy Director for Operation Liberia Fire Service. Mr. Christopher Sancolo, Director General Liberia Agriculture Community Regulatory Authority. Mr. Godia Afa Kotu Gong Gongolo, Deputy Director General for Operation Technical Service, Liberia Agriculture Company. Mr. Amara Kamara, Commissioner Liberia Electricity. Electricity Regulatory Commission, Mr. Charles Brown, Labor Inspector, Minister of Labor, Mr. Henry Benson, Managing Director, Cable Consortium of Liberia, Mr. Sheikh Sekou K. Shari, Islamic Advisor to the President, Minister of State Presidential Affairs, Mr. Emmanuel M. Horton, Senior Deputy Managing Director for Operation Port, uh, National Port Authority, Mr. Amos. Jala Boyka, Deputy Director General, Finance Intelligent Agency, Financial Intelligent Agency. Mr. Thomas Nan, Grant Ambassador at Large. Mr. Thomas Nan Gant, Grant, Ambassador at Large, Trade and Investment, represented Liberia in the state of Delaware, USA. Ms. Jala Quina Conan, Trade and Investment Representative, Liberia in Ontario, Canada. Mr. Sheikh. Ah, Mustafa Koyete, Ambassador Large, Minister of State for Presidential Affairs. Dr. Samuel Toll, Deputy Minister for Planning, Research, Development, Minister of Education. Mr. Abba, Abba Kringa, Kanga, Assistant Minister for Basic and Secondary Education, Minister of Education. Ms. Fasam Howard Niswa, Assistant Minister of Early Childhood Education, Minister of Education. Mr. Nathaniel K. Sisko, Junior Assistant Minister for Science, Technology, Vocation, and Special and Inclusive Education, Minister of Education. Mrs. Sona Traoré Sisi, Assistant Minister for Student Personnel Service, Minister of Education. Mr. Erickson K. Baga, Assistant Minister for General Administration, Minister of Education. Mr. Thomas Mamo Parker, Assistant Minister for Planning, Research, Development, Minister of Education. Mr. Jerome Jai, Deputy Director General for Audit Services, Internal Audit Agency. Mr. Edward Moluba, Deputy Minister for Research Development, Planning Minister of Internal Affairs. Mr. Emmanuel Wayang, Assistant Minister of Research Planning, Minister of Internal Affairs. Madam Ellen Pratt, Deputy Minister for Urban Affairs, Minister of Internal Affairs. Mr. Stanley A. Burma, Assistant Minister for Communal Farming, Minister of Internal Affairs. Ms. Lucy T. Tape. Assistant Superintendent Development, Montserrat County, Councilor Bobby Livingstone, Deputy Minister for Press, Public Affairs, Minister of Information and Tourism. Ms. Kayatu Dips, Kadayatu Dips, Deputy Minister of Culture and Tourism, Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism. Ms. Johnny S. Tape, Deputy Minister, Mr. Johnny Tape, Minister for Administration, Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism. Ms. Hareta Barron, Assistant Minister of Administration, Minister of Information. Culture Tourism, Ms. Matthew Nemplu, Assisting for, for Information Service, Minister of Information, Mr. Nat BJ, BJ, Assistant Minister for Technical Service, Minister of Information and Culture. Honorable Johnny Weaver, Commissioner, Chief Executive Officer, Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau. Mr. Abraham T. Simon, Executive Director, Principal, Deputy, Deputy Aircraft. Accident Investigation Bureau, AAIB, Victor A. Pasia, Deputy Managing Director of Administration, Forestry Development Authority, Madam Getru K. Konian, Nali, Deputy Minister of Director, Commercial and Technical Service, Forestry Development Authority, Ms. Nora G. Buya, Deputy Managing Director, Community Conservation and Carbon, a Carbon 
Harvesting Forest Development, Forestry Development Authority, uh, uh, and City President Barack Obama is those nominated and appointed to continue to demonstrate diligence, commitment, integrity, professionalism, and loyalty in service to the country. All right, that's where we end. Let's so, so that's that's where we are today, guys. Uh, Sarah Double, welcome. JNB, you are the best. Hungry, uh, Alexander Boniface, Emmanuel, Sata Dawson, Elizabeth, Emmanuel Blay watching. So we are here. There we are, uh, 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 guys. Let's, uh, uh, let's begin the show. Oh, uh, okay. We got a, uh, okay, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Madam Sarah Bessler Yanti. She wants everyone holding diplomatic parcels to return them immediately. Uh, she has demanded that everyone holding diplomatic passport return them before, um, uh, in, before tomorrow, March 19, 2024. She said anyone who refuses to return his or her diplomatic passport on or before the April, April 25th, that passport will be considered invalid or be denied usage anywhere. Liberian Dean of the Cabinet has said that no record of how many people carrying that brand of passport around the world. Well, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is saying that if you have a diplomatic mm -hmm. passport, mm -hmm. you got to turn it, turn it in now because they are keeping track on it. So hope those who have diplomatic passport mm -hmm. feedback. We're getting a feedback. I don't know. Who is me? Welcome, Mr. Gumby. I think it's from Peabody. Peabody, meet us, let's see. They're like, you got some fan on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh -huh. yeah, so uh, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is saying that if you have a diplomatic pass, what you're turning in. Well, Ben, that's what the, the, minister, the minister is saying, though. So what, uh, what, you, what are your take on it? I mean, it's standard operating procedure for me. It's not a big deal. I don't know. I mean, look, you know, for me, I think these things are... You know, I'm waiting for the time where we, 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 I mean, I understand they had to make an announcement because they had to get people to do it, right? Um, I just hope they go ahead and put in place whatever mechanisms they need to put in place. Um, not everybody who has diplomatic passport is a criminal, uh, but I agree with, with them. There should be a process to streamline it. Uh, so, you know, let's, we wish them well in, in, in them uh, working on trying to, um, I know there was a whole press conference today, but that's the only thing that I heard. Uh, I haven't. I didn't get a chance to. Um, I did not get a chance to listen to the press conference, so I don't know if there was anything else they talked about. <laughs> but the only news that came out of it was the fact that uh, what's the thing mean that they said everybody should turn in a diplomatic passport. But again, like I said, it is you know these things are a standard. Every new government comes in, they attempt to do these things. Let them just. Uh, make sure that we have uh, you know the right mitigating measures in place. So that we don't have to continue to go through this, you know, this over and over. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see also, uh, also, uh, but, I mean, it, it is confirmed that they have de decommissioned the NSA audit. Is it official? I, I'm hearing the same thing. I haven't been. I, I don't know if I've confirmed it. I don't know if it's going to be. I mean, I think we all know that this was something that uh, was ill advised in the first place. Even if you're doing an audit of the NSA. Um, uh, you know, I don't think it should have been made public. I think at the end of the day, you go ahead to do what you need to do. But I think, you know, when you, when you, you know, they've, they've, they've been so preoccupied with scoring these small political points, you know, that, that every time they do something, then they have to come back and eat their words, come back and eat their words, come back and eat their words. My thing is go ahead and just do it. Go ahead and do it. Let the action speak for itself. Let people know that you are doing what you need to do. Um, but I, I heard it just like you did. I'm not sure what has happened. Um, you know, we, we're going to be checking to see if that, if, if, if it is true or, you know, or if it's not. If it is true, I think that maybe, you know, there's a wise man change it, right? So. Well. Uh, but uh, another, another trend of news is this Prince Johnson tape uh, recording. Um, I mean, we can play it, we can play it, right? Yeah, we can play. I think I think it's it's important. Where is it? I don't, I, mean, I don't see. I don't know. Oh. 
Right. The, the studio probably have it, right? They don't have it. Yeah, you guys got it. Uh, Henry, you guys got our Prince Johnson recording? Yeah, I mean, why did, why did, Henry, I got it? Yeah, okay. we, have yeah. Before, we have to cue it before we play out. Uh. Okay, cool, cool, okay. Yeah, yeah but it's interesting. Yeah. it's interesting though. I mean, some people are saying, Prince Johnson intentionally allowed the leak up. I don't, I don't, I don't want to believe that. Say he intentionally. But I, that is, that, those are his thoughts, right? Yes. Yeah, I man. don't, I don't think he was under any kind of influence when he, when he said it. Knowing Prince Johnson, maybe he may change it tomorrow. You know, you don't take it with a grain of salt. Wherever he may be, a couple of things that I heard him highlight: he's not supporting Yankee. He's not going to. He doesn't support the the the, the superintendent bid of Miyape Kondogbe. I've been told that he signed the resolution already that that she should be the superintendent. So I don't know. Look, when it comes to Prince Johnson, you never know. You just wait and see what happens the next day. Consistently inconsistent. That's yeah. the hardest job. Very. If they don't meet his needs, uh, don't meet his requirement, but why would he want to sign something and try to come back on it? Why would he want to do something like that? Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, y'all didn't try to cue it while we, 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 we people can continue. I mean, you're just mute yourself. You know, I mean, like I was saying, why would he sign off on something? And I think he was very, he went against his own man, Jeremiah Cohn. He said a lot of things about Jeremiah Cohn, uh, accusing uh, uh, Miss Gono, uh, uh, you know, nonsense he was saying. You know, I mean, accusing her of relationship with Flo. Flo is a greedy man. And Flo, every time you need money, he asks you to give collateral. What is wrong with giving a collateral? When when something when credit money is supposed to say I got a whole business for that. So I think Prince Johnson is just just another I don't know, but he's I probably old age of catching up. Yeah, you know, I didn't want you to succeed to serve you in trying to that. It was a rough goal. So they black him, they put him, they took all the ministries, all the public corporations, and they gave MD around one ministry labor. Go himself to put in the ball all over the place. Even without asking me, say, okay, give us, give me four percent to do it. Like, not doing nothing. Uh -huh. They are filling all the positions. Uh -huh. And I just said that. Then they want all my men. Uh -huh. Oh no. Uh -huh. America to be super terrain. All they get what the caucus agree on. We agree on Sada. She's a lawyer, so, uh, she had an NGO there, so I have a lot of people there. You got, uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm getting you. You got Kou, Mambe, Kono. We are told that I fought to my girlfriend. Uh -huh. And Kou, that fought to my boy, new business. Uh -huh. Who brought, who up? So they want to get the board to be transferred to So all the contracts in the country that we give to fraud. With all the billions that we get, that's how we're making money. Every support we pay is a million. Uh -huh. All right, and then tell you go to put the energy, you want you to bring your house as a collateral. So I want. They also want to get the money. Ah, don't get the money. Why would I be there? They walk around on the on the on the on the front of the Senate. I want people on left by to join us in the meeting because they are laws that prevent any such vote from from being established. Yeah. But, but, but do you think that yeah, Senator, 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 do you think that Yah will debate the issue when it comes to the war ground code? Will debate against it? Yah will not debate with a UP man. Yeah, what I say. So supporting here yeah, is supporting here yeah, yeah, in our time. You want to say, I want to admit the premises to you that because of the, I don't want to support that, yeah, I'm supporting what no, the, the, the country is better. Yeah, that, that, that is it. the best way to go now. We're going to have it. We're going to be hierarchy. So, we're going to have it. We're going to have it. But, uh, uh, my brother, 
is our son, he believes in us, and he will not do anything less. So he will join the MDR of my money, and we will register him and we will support him and he will win. That's it. So, uh, uh, yeah. That's so did a man join the MDR back Monday today? Did he? Did they register him? Do we know if they no. register him, Dominic? I don't think so. I've been trying to get some but Johnson update today, and and uh, he's, he's not picking his phone up. So. Well, look for me. I think it's 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 um. Uh, look, whether we like it or not, I think Prince Johnson has to understand something that he, uh, either way, this thing was going to befall him, right? This fear of this war crimes court thing, I, I think at the end of the day, he should stop making it about himself and just, you know, accept the, the reality that this is one of those things where it will have to happen. Uh, if it does happen in the next year, two years, whatever time it happens, at the end of the day, let him just do what he got to do. But this notion of him always coming up and saying these things, you know, I, at the end of the day for me, I don't, uh, like I said, he said today the mayor was going to resign, I mean, to join MDR and register. We haven't seen that. More than likely, you're going to see Prince Johnson in Nimba campaigning for Yan Tuan saying that he spoke and he was he was upset. And that's the reason he spoke, but, but President Boyka finally called him. And so he's okay now. On the issue of Mimi Gono, like I said, I've been told reliably by people, members of the national legislature, that he has already signed the resolution supporting her to be superintendent, and she is going to be the next superintendent. So let's wait to see what happens. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that, that's that's just my thought on it. Well, uh, I mean, we all know that, uh, as I, I always said, uh, Senator Johnson is you mean almost he has influenced the last three presidential elections in Liberia. Take care of leave it. In fact, he, he votes for the one election in, in increase. Uh he he controls Nima, he's the godfather of Nima, and so but I think it's about time that uh uh, uh reality sets in that he just cannot continue to obstruct the, the, the process. Uh, he been holding on this superintendent position for a long time. I mean, all the other caucus members were in line, and he been going to push his own agenda. And now here we are. Uh, he's complaining about positions, positions. But I mean, all everything is positioned. How they take the job and give to the person and that person and so forth. That what he been doing for the last 18 years. Which is the he's the longest serving lawmaker now. He has served two nine years term this is his third time you on so this man is dominating the politics and he's controlling things but again as we said the, uh, let's see what happened with the war crime court let's see how far you're going to go i know people are pushing it people are determined that they, they're going to be sure that this this is not put on the kick under the rock to make sure that it happens and he told me that it's not going to happen but let's see what happens you want to hear president Boyka first major press conference when he addressed the, the first major press conference we expect to hear from him maybe in may or, or before that and the question should be asked yeah what's his position on the war crimes court are he, he still going to push it but right now i think it's tall in the senate i don't know how the senate is doing right now i've got it house pass it and it's tall in the senate right now hopefully we can bring it to the floor for an up and down vote so we can know what's happening but just cannot continue to allow people to permeate our society. That's my take on the Prince Johnson issue. Yeah, everybody, you guys got to add on, on this tip. No, I just I think I think Prince Johnson should not be giving any attention. He always trying to look for attention. Every time he's out there looking for some attention, and I don't think Prince Johnson should be giving. I hope that the Senate can act on the war and economic crime court. It is very important that that takes place or they, they sign off on it because you cannot store it in the Senate. The House did a great job by passing it. I think the, the president pro term need to get up and get her people to get on this. It's about time that it's passed. I think, but with Prince Johnson, every time going and going, <laughs> somebody 
uh, see himself as the king of Nima, that nobody can function in Nima with all his approval and all those things. I think those are ludicrous. And I think it's, it's important that, that people move on. He's all about job and making money and getting money from the people in Nima. That's all he's about, getting money from them and, and trying to attend a meet accusing uh jeremiah Cohen and all of that or jeremiah Cohen was sitting there and you know, i mean those are just <coughs> metrics that he's using you know i don't think we could give him any attention he's getting closer to to, to stand trier and i think it, it's getting to him so that's what i got to say Kevin? <laughs> okay, uh, I'll just, uh, I didn't hear uh, what you said. Okay, well, well, Prince Johnson, on the Prince Johnson tip is very consistent to what we've been saying, same with Prince Johnson for a long time. So, um, the, the Unity Party accept Prince Johnson for who Prince Johnson is. Um, they started off, off with Pay to play and what Prince Johnson want he, he don't get it and that's the he keep on asking uh, I, I think uh, the the alliance between Prince Johnson and to say you know is pay to play that's what the alliance uh, was built on so uh, uh, I think he fe he feeling that the you know that part is sometimes is somehow going in a different way so he cry out so and with the uh may I pay superintendent job uh whether people like it or not Prince Johnson call it shadi nearby Prince Johnson agree fine but he called it shadi and sometimes agree today and say something tomorrow so he called it shot so uh I will not say she will get a job until I see her get a job because they should announce a job by now if you're going to get a job. So I don't think, it's, I don't, I don't think, you know, especially if Prince Johnson don't feel good, I don't think uh, she will get a job. Some other folks say uh, she may not get a job. So I, 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 I don't know. But Prince Johnson is Prince Johnson. Um, the Unity Party accepted him the way he is, so they, they should continue uh, with him. And that's, that, that's, that's all I got to say about Prince Johnson. You know, I think, I, I think she will get the job. She will be appointed. Prince Johnson does not control President Boakai appointment. Uh, he doesn't control that. She, I believe she will get the job, and uh, she will be the next superintendent of Lima County. Prince Johnson is another one who doesn't own Lima County. Doesn't own yeah, County. but uh, but up to now, but up to now, it's still it's still. If you're gonna get a job, why why listen? Keep coming every day, nothing. And to my understanding, she back here. So I'll I'll, I'll wait until I see it. Though. I, I I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna say Prince Johnson run Lima. He control Lima. The entire structure. Uh, in Nimba uh, belong to Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson own Nimba. No matter what people will say, he own Nimba. That his place. What he want, he get it in Nimba. That's the structure. And when you look at uh, a JMB, uh, JMB sign up uh, to that. You know, he he accepted that. Uh, Prince Johnson was shopping around. He went to the community. He couldn't get that. He, you know, he couldn't get out from uh, uh, where where he wanted, so he break away. So the papa, uh, you know, he accepted it. So that's why you see Prince Johnson doing what Prince Johnson do. Prince Johnson will get what he want. He don't get what he want. He will. Uh, he, more tips will come up. He's not going to uh, say. You see, Prince Johnson is like is like somebody who on who on drugs. They always come out and ask for more. Come on, ask for more. I'm out of the home. He he wanted, he thirsty for it. He wanted to do it. So he will come out. But when it comes to the superintendent position in Nimba, 
that Prince Johnson, that, that Prince Johnson stuff there. What he wanted, he, he get it. Pay to play. Julius, welcome, man. Go ahead, share on this. We're talking about Prince Johnson and the most the recent videos that just came out. Yeah, um, you know, Dr. Peabody, uh, great to be back here again today. Um, wonderful. I'm sorry, yesterday, I, I mean, I'm going to call you back yesterday, by day, but hopefully I'll give you a call um, after here today. Um, you know, Prince Johnson, the issue with Prince Johnson and, and, and all the people, you know, they're sometimes it, it's very sickening, right? When we sit and talk about Prince Johnson having to control the narrative in, 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 in Liberia, our body politics, it is so disheartening that we have given this man so much power. And, and when I say we, I include myself because Liberians in general, we have allowed this man who, I mean, he's a perpetrator of war crime to have him to control the narrative where the good people of Nima County will sit and allow this man to dictate to them as to what they should do with the, the, the governing aspect of that county. It, it, I mean, it just, it, it baffles me to think that one person will be given that leverage over an entire county for what I, i'm still to understand what is it that this man had done so much to the extent where he detects with almost everybody but you know what i'm not surprised about everything that prince johnson said and like ben Sandy said earlier there is a possibility that he prince johnson will come back and say he pulled his words back whatever happened um you know president Burkai reached out and apologized to him so now they have meant their relationship they're moving forward and everything is okay that is how wishy-washy this old man is he, he just i mean he's just un unstable nothing about this man is you, you can't predict anything about him i don't know if it simply had to do with the war the fact that he's a rebel and so you know you cannot predict rebels so it, it just makes it hard but, um, you know, President Barca said he would sleep with the devil. And now he has the opportunity. He's sleeping with the devil, the devil in Prince Johnson. And and here you are. You, you're hearing all of these things. He's not satisfied with what's going on. He wants to be the guy to dictate who gets appointed. And as a matter of fact, to even hear him talking about somebody being cheap, you you live you, you live almost all your life. I mean, after killing innocent you know, Liberians. You're still living off of taxpayers' money, and you have the nerve to sit there and talk about um, somebody being cheap and not willing to give you their money uh, because you feel like what you what you did, you kill a former president, all right? You butcher him on camera, and then you think that you should be rewarded for it. I don't blame Prince Johnson for some of the nonsense that he would say and get away with it. I blame us, Liberian, for making some of these, uh, 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 you know, senseless uh, decisions that actually keep us in abject poverty. Hmm. <coughs> well, sir. UIG is UIG, I mean, like I said, uh, I've, I've, I've considered, I was trying to be consistent and inconsistent. He's someone who I follow that he's just not consistent. But again, like you already said, Lofa is the librarian people that continue to make this guy relevant. So that's what we are. But, uh, you know, uh, I mean, honestly, this is what's going to happen, though. The issue of the war crime code, crimes code, if it comes to to to, to, for, to, to the full center, this is what we're going to find out what's, what's going to happen, who, who is who now, because uh, either he will he and his he and he and the people will break will break rank, rank and file because if we're supporting it. The U.S. government, our major partner, our major international partner, our major uh, donor, uh, they, are, they are in support of it. They are pushing for it. And, if, and President Bogart, he expressed uh, the hope that he's for it. But now it left now with PYJ and the senators because right now it's in the Senate. So I think the librarian push should start putting pressure on, on the Senate to make sure that they put this vote, this stuff up for an up and down vote. You should put it up. You should put it up because it's it's just the last the house passed it quickly and it got to the senate and it's been stalled so they should call them out the pro tem i don't know they should put the, the bill up on the floor like put it up and let us let's get past this right now also uh, i'm also concerned about 
the president issued an ultimatum that two weeks. He said, well, I gave two weeks to the people in, uh, in, in Kimma. The set up committee reported in two weeks. It's been more than three weeks now. The committee is yet to report. If the, uh, the military wives, they, 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 pro they were protesting. He has set up to get them two weeks again to report to him, and still we have not heard it. And then the last one I'm hearing now, the, 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 uh, the audit for NSA. I'm hearing now is, well, we hope to confirm it, but um, what I'm hearing is, gonna, is apparently it's not going to take place. I don't know what's happening. And, and then there's asset recovery committee he set up last week. And they see, they, some of the guys are already saying they're not going to cooperate with, with, with the committee. And then we next we heard there were wars, wars between war, war, wars between uh, the CDC Secretary General Koji and the EPS director. He, he drew, he drew a, a, a red line and, and Koji is also warning too. So, I mean, a lot's going on and just when what's happening, you know, it's, it's getting confusing. But the country is being the country is its country is on its on is on the roll. But all we're saying on May first, we we evaluate the president Boyka hundred days in office. <laughs> but 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 Tamale, um, on a very uh, serious note though, the issue with this asset recovery team, um, I am not I am not one of those to actually support Koji's decision. You know, I'm not going to say anybody should be. Uh, disobedient when it comes to the law. I think we all should uh, respect the law, okay? But you cannot put a group of people together who have shown to other people that they they are targeting them, and then you expect them to sit there and, and just accept it. I, I, again, I didn't see this going anywhere. I think this is just a mere opportunity to give others who campaign for President Boykai an opportunity to have jobs because they had nowhere else to put them. So they decided to say, okay, guys, come over here. This is what we can do for you. We will give you something. At least you can get your monthly, um, you know, per damn. Monthly you get something. And after six years, we will still go back to librarians and say, people did not cooperate. Or <laughs> we were not able to do certain things. We will, we will cry about financial constraints and all of these things are gonna be talked about. So. I don't expect anything to come out of these guys. And of course, I don't expect CDC to comply with any one of them, especially for those who are, I mean, these are political appointments that were made. You would think that President Boyka would have used his, his, you know, wisdom to say, let me create an independent body, all right? Invite an independent investigation team, a team of independent folks to come and conduct this entire process and not to start from the previous government. If they sincerely wanted to make sure that we retrieved assets, okay, and prosecute people for stealing from us, it should start from the uh, UP government because there are people who were in, in, in United Party government. They stole. So some of them overnight became millionaires at the expense of the suffering masses. So what about those people? Are we not going to investigate them? Wasn't Amara Conan also part of some kind of investigation? And he, he claimed that, you know, this report that came out about Amara Conan that he was part of some kind of um, corruption. How about all of those people? Did Amara Conan just become overnight millionaire? Why aren't they investigating the, the, uh, the UP government as well? The same group of people. Then Honorable Boyka said he was going to be different. He would declare and publish his assets. Where are, where are all of these things? Where are these premises? And you want the CDC to say, let's be sincere to ourselves here. Why it is true that the CDC government, okay, they did certain things that, I mean, none of us should support. We should actually call them out. But I think the UP government should be thinking right and do the right thing. If they really want us to have an asset recovery team, an asset recovery team that is independent and going to the core of this entire corrupt practice, then I think they should form for us an independent team, not people who simply stood on the campaign trail for them and you want to give them job and opportunity to represent you. I don't think that's fair. Yeah, I think you know, that's what you said is very true. I think I will, I will, I, I, I do support the president in calling for the asset recovery team, but I think I would want to see him go back a, a, a couple of years, you know, beyond that, you know, go back three or four years and say, hey, we will do this, uh, we'll do that. Because there, are, there were all this that were done by, by the, the, the the, the, the very government, you know, uh, there are some audit out there that was done by UP and some people were even uh, uh, 
uh, involved. So go back to that list and see the other. Don't let it just go down like that. Even if the CBC government did not do it, do not just let this list uh, fall on the wayside. But go ahead and investigate people. I think you need to go a little farther, but I think I support the move. But he needs to go a little farther in investigating these people because it is very, very important. If you really want to be fair, do it. Bring an independent team that's not that not an partisan. Bring somebody that is not from the United Party, not from the CDC. Bring somebody completely neutral who will make a decision that will be fair to everybody. But if you put in people that are already had issue with the previous government, you know they're going to go after them and all of that. So I think it. It's a good move. I applaud him, but go and bring somebody completely neutral that are not any partisan, uh, a partisan. Bring them up and let that investigation go on. But I think it's a good step. It's important that people be audited. It's important that people who earn millions of dollars from minimum salary they are making. It's important that those things go forward. But again, bring people who are completely. Uh, 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 not part of any political party. I think that will bring a lot of confidence to the team. That will bring a lot of confidence to the Liberian people because when they sit there and make a decision, you know that they are making a strong decision, not on part, not on partisan or sentiments, but they're making that decision uh, 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 clear from, from, from a very transparent uh, standpoint. I think it's very important. Yes, sir. Well, welcome, Professor Kennedy. Good to see you, man. Yeah, my man. How's your birthday, man, doing? I hope you had a great time, man. Yeah, I had a I had a great time until I, uh, until I got the news of my friends my friends passing. Just uh, uh, so sad, so sad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Condolences, condolences. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we're talking about the. Uh, you listen to the Prince Johnson uh, leak tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's what's your what's your thought about that tip? what you heard of it. Yeah, I think Prince Johnson has proven everything that is wrong with Liberia. When you have somebody like this in this position that seems to be, or keep trying to hold the country at, at, at a hostage, they also show that this is what pretty much is wrong with Liberia. For someone like Prince Johnson to continue to have this level of control over successive governments or attempts to control successive governments. That's everything that is wrong with Liberia. It's like we have two countries. We have a country within the country, meaning you have one group of people that are just struggling to make ends meet. And then you have another group of people who are within the government and it seems to be manipulating everything within the government for their benefit, for their personal benefit. So the people tend to suffer, you know, majority of the people tend to suffer. This is the reason why uh, even the economy is the same thing like that. You have a group of people that get into the government and they really enjoy the economy. They enjoy the growth in the economy. But the rest of the population doesn't seem to enjoy it. Prince Johnson is like everything that is wrong with Liberia. And it seems that everybody makes, people who wants to come to power seems to make the same mistake of giving Prince Johnson credence. I know they're saying you cannot get to be president unless you go through NIMBA. But I think there's an opportunity in there to try to win the people over. Well, I have to work alongside Prince Johnson. I know, to my name, Chief, you said Prince Johnson is the godfather of the county. Yeah, people respect that. But still, still, this is every, this is the reason why the country doesn't seem to be developing at the rate it should be developing at. So that take, people shouldn't be surprised <laughs> because he continues to have this kind of influence over governments and governments and government. And I'm, I'm kind of impressed and surprised at the same time that Judge Weah took a stand, maybe in the last few years or so, took a stand that he wasn't going to fall for this pay for play thing. You know, so not be surprised there. Not be surprised. But, 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 but your, your last statement, but if, if he took a stand, but people are saying they're causing an election, though. I'd like it. <laughs> So I think this is an opportunity where you have to do something on moral grounds, take a stand, do something on moral grounds, and people will remember you for that. Then you never know. You know, he, you know, if you fight, you lose, you run away, you can still come back the next day to fight. So he took a stand on moral grounds. Yeah, maybe hopefully the next time he comes, people will say, hey, you know, they may not say need Prince Johnson anymore. And to my man Lufa's point, I don't know if it was Lufa or him, the, uh, doc, the doc Peabody that said it, 
he, this is what his third term. You got to be kidding third, me! Third, nine years turn. Nine, nine, yeah. nine years. Nine years. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Can we measure the level of human development for Nimba? I know Monterado is all the way up there, you know, Grand Basa, some other contests in the bottom, but Nima hasn't developed at the rate that it should be developing, considering the level of resources in Nima. You know, and because the country depends on foreign aid, US government cannot be doing business with Prince Johnson. So they're not developing at the rate that they could be developing at. So, hey, you know, but I think it's, uh, it's an example of everything that is wrong with Iberia. He, he, he's proving everything that is wrong with Nigeria. And this has been going, it's not just him. It's been going on since the 60s, the 70s. The, we've seen it decades over decades. There's no reason Liberia should be poor, but it's poor because of the way how certain people control the government, control the economy, control the tribes, control you know, uh, um, the nepotism within the country. That's why Liberia is where it is, you know? So, Professor Kennedy, though, um, this is one thing that I have over the years uh, uh, heard people say about Nima County. Every time you talk about Prince Johnson, and, and I don't want us to generalize this whole, let me not say us, I don't want to generalize this because I don't think it's everyone in Nima that is in support of this, but it appears to be that um, I think there are more people who support Prince Johnson because of the mere fact that he built a university and, and they forget to understand that that is in itself is not any form of investment for the county. This is Prince Johnson. And, and you can correct me, uh, uh, Professor Larry, on this point. I look at it as Prince Johnson having to invest in his 401k or retirement uh, plan because there is a one that is in Liberia that works. OK, so. Once you start, once you start having people uh, um, going after Prince Johnson, he knows he have already invested. He, he he saved his money in that institution because at the end of the day, that is where he will still get his money from. That's his retirement. That's his four hundred one k. If he's no longer in government, he he's going to be the owner of that institution. Liberian don't own it. Prince Johnson and his family own that institution. I see why people would say. Do we not benefit from it? Yes, you benefit from it, but guess what? To some extent, you are limited. This is is you don't you're not going to sleep in that place. You don't own it. Prince Johnson understand the value of education. The question should be why did he not advocate for quality education at the Senate level to make sure that they were investing in, uh, uh, uh you know, adding more funds to the budget for education. You understand what I'm saying? Why is he not advocating to make sure that if there are community colleges in Nima County, that these community colleges are advanced, they are providing all of the things that are needed to provide quality education. Now, when he take money that was stolen from us and then go build in Nima County because he knows that we don't have pension plans, we don't have 401k, and if he put his money in the bank when he's no longer in, in office, if we are to have a government with spine and the audit him, of course, you know something's going to happen, right? They're going to take that away from him. So I think that's what the problem is, and that's what he's afraid of. <laughs> you know the funny thing about all these politicians with colleges and universities in Liberia? You need to understand, number one, what is the graduation rate? How many people are graduating from these schools, and how many people get jobs after graduating? Sometimes, like you said, they may just be using it as a way to just, you know, maybe a little side hustle. But mm -hmm. the value of a college or university degree is at the end of the day, you're going to be able to get a job in the field where you study. You don't see that in Liberia. Can you tell me the graduation rate for the people that are going to Prince Johnson, South Joseph, or any one of the guys in colleges and universities? You don't know that. Can you tell me how many jobs people who went to the colleges and university exactly. uh, landed after they graduated? We don't know that. So that thing might just be a waste, complete waste of resources. Because without being able to tell us how well, it, it, look, it's just a little side hustle for these guys that, you know, they should be putting our money directly in the education budget and develop the system holistically for everybody as a whole, right. grow the economy so you can create jobs for the kids then when they graduate from college. But they don't do that stuff. 
you know? But so, I tell uh, you, man, we gotta get we gotta at some point gotta get serious and and and, and <laughs> wash our hands by Prince Johnson, you know, and I do business with him. Well, Kennedy, have you seen the the the, the, the new uh, budget that was submitted? Have you have a copy of it? I've been waiting to get my hands on a copy, and I haven't gotten the actual copy from the MOFD, the Ministry of Finance Development Planning. So, you have a copy? No, I try. I try, I try to look to, hold, to get hold of it. We need to see that budget. Uh, but um, so yeah, far, the one thing that grabbed my attention on that budget was an article that someone sent me today, showing that uh, I think the new government said they weren't going to do any new borrowing within this new budget. So I don't know how true that is yeah. because on the Ministry of Finance website, they just signed a loan or they're in the process of signing a loan to borrow $40 million on the world for an African, yeah, yeah. For an African Development Bank. So I'm still waiting to see the budget to see if there's a line item in the budget that talks about new borrowings. And there's nothing wrong with borrowing. I firmly believe that you can borrow up to 750 to almost a billion dollars you need it for development. Just talk about borrowing the money, turn around and go pay salaries with it. Because that's absolute nonsense. And that's what we end up doing. Borrow the money, put it in development, job creation, tourism, manufacturing, all those things. That, in essence, will lead to people getting jobs. People get jobs to pay taxes. Businesses get money. You know, they earn revenue, they be able to pay taxes. That's how you grow your budget. Don't just go borrow money, take it and go rent cars and buy cars for government officials and let them fly private jets and all this nonsense that is the problem we've been seeing over and over and over you know but just imagine now this new budget every lawmaker who have you there are how many there are 100 what 30 senators and 103 103 103 103 plus 30 that what the 133 right mm -hmm. No, it's 73 and 10. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 103. So now, mm -hmm. in this new budget, every lawmaker will have a brand new car. You see what I'm talking about? And, and at a rate of $35,000 of, 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 of a car. Of, of, of car. So, yeah, so the budget that they're going to take it? With the rate of 45,000. 45,000? Right. Yes, yeah, so they increased it. 45 times 103. How much? So that's about that's about three point five million dollars, almost four million dollars. You see what I mean? It's 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 forty five thousand. There was some amendment in the PFM law. It used to be that there's this limitation because there are certain government officials that went uh, above this lane, which of course got vehicle for like the current finance minister. The last vehicle he got was almost seventy thousand dollars when he was minister of finance. Yeah, and he, 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 he just defied that. He just defied. And the, the, that was absolutely not justifiable. I know, but I know, I know they were right? it, but what, yeah, what, so, what there, but. so he got a vehicle almost at that. Uh, uh, that was a full expedition, right? So he got that amount, but that was a violation of the PFM law because it's indicated in the PFM law that uh, the limit it should be 45. It should be because they spoke against buying a news vehicle. The justification of buying news vehicles is that it can break down anytime. So they went to say, okay. You're going to get a brand new vehicle, but just the limit. It shouldn't pass 45,000 US dollars. But sometimes many of the uh, official of government so, will, 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 will go and So what happened, what happened to that four expeditions? What happened to that 75,000 on a car? If it was purchased in 2000 and, uh, he, you know, he was there 2015, 16. That's two years uh, span. 2017, six years, that car, if it's a new car, $75,000, that means you this go this he could he could still use that car so while so, they're purchasing you know, so yeah them, yeah it's it there's a there's a law um the, the gsa got a, a, a kind of a policy it's not a law policy. Years, you after right. three years yeah. for he says rawa gagwa got a vehicle as minister of health and then that vehicle was bought in 2024. rawa gagwa if he stayed on as minister of health you would use that vehicle, it would depreciate to a certain level, then Rao can I apply to purchase the vehicle for himself after three years. Yes. To own if, the vehicle. Yeah. Yes, you would now go and then they would depreciate the vehicle to look into the, I don't know, the blue book or whatsoever, and they get you that rate, right? Then you can purchase the vehicle for yourself, if you will, if you got the means. But if you cannot, then the public it will be open to the public or any other government official to bid for the vehicle. But if you, the, the user can go for it, you get it. It's three years. But can I, uh, ten, 10 seconds, somebody, I know I just got it. I just, but that has not been the process. There, there's a loophole for corruption there, right? 
because from all indication years, uh, those folks who have purchased those vehicles and have applied to purchase them for themselves have actually most more than likely got the approval, but they have not paid. So they, they continue to drive the vehicle. They own them on paper, but they still owe the librarian people. However, every time there's a new budget passed to purchase a new vehicle, they pass those bur budgets. So what's, what's the essence of buying $75,000 car after three years? You, you're supposed to own the car and pay if it's 50000 or 40000 but we don't know where the money is going. If the money has actually been a, 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 a recurve for those vehicles, then there should be no reason why we're budgeting every three years, three to four million dollars for an additional vehicle for a new government official. This is this is broad day ro robbery. Yeah, but Professor Kennedy, let me ask you that. I mean, I, in America, the lawmakers, they, they, they don't buy, buy cars for them, right? No, no. But they got good benefit also, though. Our research no, they, 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 got, good they, they got good benefits. Oh, cool. so, take, for I, example, okay. take, for I mean, example, I mean, the fourth I mean, largest I mean, city. Officials. Take, for example, the fourth largest city, which is Houston, right? Yeah. Houston has roughly, I think, about 12,000 or so equipment of vehicles. They have a pool of vehicle. If a government official wants to use a certain car, they're putting a request through a database system where they would request, and then they would receive a key or a, a, a uh, they will receive approval and then they can go and take that car and use it. They have their own personal vehicles. Law and because in that you should have their own personal vehicles. Yes. This nonsense of the government, it's such a waste of money. In fact, one of the first projects I worked on in the city of Houston, we managed to connect Verizon over to the, uh, it's the computer system on the uh, on cars. It's what's the OC something, I can't think of the, the name, OC, some box. When you connect it there, it can track every vehicle or equipment owned by the city. So I could sit on a computer and just look and see what a particular vehicle is. This nonsense of people just stealing cars and stuff in this day and age, all you need is just an app connected to the chip on the, on the car, and you can know where the car is at all times. This is the thing where you need to, that's why I say you have two types. You have like an enclave within that country where the lawmakers live that life above where they would have been able to live it had they been working in the private sector. This is why everybody want to be a politician. Everybody want to be a politician because you get in there, the perks is just ridiculous. They pay for everything for you. You get in fresh new vehicle every, what, 36 months or so to flip it over. That's nonsense. They can't afford it. And we're also paying for the cooks and the yard boys of our representatives. It's in the That's budget. nonsense. They are making more yeah. Yeah. 10 million people in New York City, twice the population of Liberia, they are earning less money. And the, you know, we talked about budgets last week, right? The budget of a place like New York State is far way greater than Liberia. And the senators earn less money than senators in Liberia. Look at that kind of nonsense. Look at that kind of nonsense. So I, I, I tell you, Chief, it, it is absolutely what? crazy. Let me, I want to share something with you guys, right? What you just spoke about, Larry, uh, and, and I'm going to share this screen with you guys, just, just to kind of just, uh, um, add on to what you just said. Oh, sister, um, Grace came out. Uh, you know what? I'll hold that until Grace charmed me before she said, we, 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 we <laughs> I guess we're still in women month, right? Grace, I'll hold that. Patiently just waiting. <laughs> Yeah, we stay in women's months. Also. Okay, so I, I'll let you, I'll let you go, and then I was sure. No, I will just be quick. It's nice to be here. Say hi to everybody, you know, watching you guys on the platform. There should be certain consideration and circumstances for government employees to have vehicles. I don't know who set the system up, but the whole entire government system that's set up in Liberia is to steal. And it just it take it, it takes away from the, the poor people in the country so bad. And you know, it's pathetic and, and, and kind of uh, sorry for, for us to be even sitting here and discussing it. That's why you see most of them they fight and they kill each other, poison each one another just for that government position jobs. Yeah. And some of them are there, you know, continue milking the system. This the senators and the, the legislature, they also the lawmakers are supposed to be ashamed of themselves. I remember I went, uh, let me just say quickly, I went to do some work in Liberia in 2018. And I went to LRA and, and I saw the all the vehicles packed in the yard of LRA. I met a lot of them and they were just there. I heard the employees then go and among themselves. 
at the LRA airports were refusing to gain any vehicles. Why, why should why should they have all those vehicles even packed in that place? And, and, and because you know, people who in power and you're not my friend, you're working there, I will not get you the car, I will, I will trail around, all, the, all of those things. In in the in the great United States here, people work with government, they don't own vehicles here. Everybody have their own cars. If we have to do work or for the government and we have to drive a certain mile, we just sign a voucher with our mileage on it, we get paid for that. So, so I don't understand how they're buying all these cars and people like uh, uh, Teresa uh, uh, Cummings, bro, the woman who was killed in the street and was flocked to death. And, and they don't have any services for uh, uh, our elderly people in the country. It, it's so shameful. I don't, Liberians don't have respect for these people. When they come to America, don't play them no mind because they are not helping the country. Thank you. But well, let, let me throw you out there, right? If if we 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 pass, we we all can can chip in it. If they if you had the budget in front of you now, what would be the areas you you will cut as consider waste? You will cut and prioritize uh, health and education. I say this say because you know, I was in Liberia last year in April and we were Firestone Group, and we we were, we were touring the viral health self and centers in my, my Gibi. And you'll be you'll surprise you that there are there are people who they kind of work every day, but they are they're not on payroll, they are volunteers. They kind of work every wow. day. They show up there, yeah. They show up there. Then they took us in there, the hour in the hour room, took us in there, the, in the, the med place. Look, look, if you if you and then you wonder, you wonder, say, but the people don't have all these facilities, right? They have no money. But then you buy it, you our lawmakers then take all that kind of money away. But then when it when it down to vote, right? How people go and vote, they see people into office. The people go there and just and just carry them and say, look, having this rally, they get in t-shirt, they get in caps, then they, they cook. They, I mean, I don't know, but if you had a budget in front of you, what would you cut in the budget and, and, and put it towards education and health? The, the, the first thing we we'll go around the table, everybody can chip in for two minutes on it. The first thing I really want to cut from these uh, um, from these so-called law lawmakers, um, and, and I refer to them as lawbreakers, is first of all, the thing they have was SIM card. You're not getting no SIM card, okay? We will open a government account with any of the uh, our GSM companies. We will pay for the phone just like it is done here. We hand it to you. That way we can monitor who you communicating with, how much is put on that device, and we can track it. That way, we're not simply giving you same card and you're using it to call your girlfriends and other people. And at the end of the month, you're still getting it back. That's one thing that will be cut up. Secondly, you not only vehicle. We will assign you vehicle. And when you're leaving, we're taking it right back for the next person who will replace you. And we would make that determination as to when we procure our uh, new vehicles. Third, you first, this whole issue about we paying for your 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 your, your maids and all of these things. No, we're not going to do that. We, you, you get paid way more than anybody else, so you should be able to pay for your, your, your house girl or whoever that is in your house. So all of those little things, we, if we start to cut those things back, I think those are funds that could actually be allocated to education and healthcare in Liberia. So I, I think I, I was told they have some, there's a line item in the budget where they have to pay for uh, uh, entertainment. Entertainment for what? Who, who are we supposed to pay for your entertainment? You pay for Darius Dillon to go entertain himself? You you seriously think about that? You gave Darius Dillon money to go entertain himself, and then you still pay him almost $10,000 a month? I will cut that out. So those are three things. Those far that just sitting here, I will first and foremost say it's out. Get it out of the way, and let's take all of that money allocated towards education and health care. Chris, what, what were you caught up? Unnecessary expenditures, like what we're seeing now, all this buying cars and, 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 and the, the scratch card that the people share among their girlfriends. They don't even have use for it. Even one time I went to that bra or offer it, it for a cheap price, they were selling it out and everything. You know, so it's just those things when they caught up, they can the main thing that we already need is connectivity with the, the different counties. So if they can take those money, you know, take all that uh, waste uh, expenditure out and, and, and use that money to maybe build rules, you know, put into the educational system, put into the healthcare system. 
and uh, we're talking about the benefits. Somebody says something about benefits for the government employees here in America. Yes, the people got benefits, but they got benefits that make sense. That when you're sick, you can go to the hospital, your insurance is there to make sure that yeah, you, you get the, the health care that you need. Uh, when they, they cut those expenditures, they fix the hospital. The people don't have to go out of the country to go and get surgery. The hospital will be bumped in a good way. And then our people will have the, the, the government officials and people that are working within the government will have the benefits for counseling. Most of the people in the country, they, they, they got trauma. They're suffering from trauma. Seriously, from, from the war. So they, 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 they will introduce a counseling system to them and their children can benefit from these uh, 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 waste that they are wasting on buying cars and building houses for girlfriends, and then they take the car. I mean, that's why everybody wants to work in the government in Liberia because the stealing is just there. And until they can fix that system, I don't know who, who put it within the system that our forefathers then said because it wasn't like that. I know personally, because my mom worked with the government, and she had a very high position. She never, they never gave her government car. She had her own car. Once in a while, they would bring car to pick her up. But she never had a government car owning it and she would buy it after. It's just too much stealing. And we hope that they can change that since the, the, the country has been rescued, so to speak. We hope the rescue team can make a change. Do we? A minute, Professor Lazo goes on this. Yes. Um, I, I would have a different perspective on the on most serious note. And it started way, 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 way back. Uh, in terms of uh, the governance system of our country, it's a, it's, a, it's a bureaucratic tendency, right? So they will say to you, I've had argument and I'm composition, not argument, composition with a lot of lawmakers uh, from 205 when they go into go six, asking the same question. This is the problem. Uh, one of them said to me, we, we are the one, people that come and sit here to make the laws for this country. If you will say to us, we don't need vehicle, because I spoke against every other thing, but the, the, the perspective I have now is after having conversation with most of them, they were gonna need vehicles to move about. That's all they said. But here's what I would basically say to this process. I would think if I were to hold the budget today and do some analysis of the budget, I would first and foremost, like I was looking to it last night, uh, for instance, general claims. Most of the money that you got in general claims and some of the money that sometimes we don't have, I would chunk most of the money from general claims and put it to um, probably to health and education. And I would take most of the money from what we call fuel and lubricant. Because if you went to the land item of fuel and lubricant, you will notice that a lot of the money through the recurrent processes has been spent on fuel and lubricant. I will go back to the, just the lawmakers, for instance, the legislature in the budget. I will go back there and look at the land item they call transportation allowance and local transportation allowance, right? There are a lot of money that chunk to that land at it. Transportation allowance and local transportation. The local transportation allowance is defined as in the budget, a lawmaker of district number two, man, give it county. It's leaving for his district, basically, to visit another constituents in that district. That should be an allowance for him. It's ridiculous. It's unacceptable. Then you have also local transportation allowance. Then you have Communication allowance, which is the call called the trash guy. They got communication allowance, they got local transportation allowance, they got fuel and lubricant, then they got what we call constituents visitation. So the, I mean it, it's a long process here going through it. Sometimes we sit and we want to move around the budget process and, and, and to money and, 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 and colleagues. So I want to go through all of those things. Leave the issue of a buying a vehicle three years. That would not cost more. But look at all the things that chunk in the budget. A lot of uh, era the chunk. Then they say the guy will call constituent legislative development fund. Every lawmaker will have to chunk certain amount of money in the budget for constituents' engagement purposes. So if you are to mount all of this money, you're gonna see you're gonna pull a lot of millions of dollars. So I would be very, very strategic in going first and foremost to general claim, remove all of that, and then we want to focus on health and education then we move back to infrastructure because most of our pro problem will come from the infrastructure aspect, road development. Where are we supposed to be moving with, with roads and other, other areas? So there are a lot of things we can come through the budget there and hold a lot of money and save money for other uh, major uh, issues that are very uh, cogent to the need of the Liberian people, I think. Robert, what are you covering the budget? Listen, I, I, I don't think, look, why, why is it that I, I concur that 
you know, we should have government of, uh, cars for official, uh, official businesses. I do not think that uh, the Liberian people tax money should be wasted on purchasing vehicles for lawmakers, right? Uh, in this country, uh, people at some of the top uh, executive level make enough money, and this is part of their contracts, so that they're able to purchase vehicles for themselves. They're able to budget these things, gas and so forth and so on. Uh, and like uh, Grace said, if you were to use your personal vehicle for um, company purposes, there are many ways you can go about ensuring that um, you get paid for that. But I think it's a waste of time for us to pay lawmakers so much of what they make. And then on top of that, we've got to foot the bill for uh, their gas. We got to foot the bill for uh, their communication. And we got the foot. Look, when I heard that, like the Liberian people were paying for the maids, the cook, and the uh, securities of our lawmakers, I was I was appalled by that. We shouldn't be doing that. And here is the corrupt thing about this: uh, a lot of these guys, some of them don't even have no maids, but they still collect these checks. Some of these ma some of these folks don't have actual people on payroll, wherein the funds are going directly to them as this is my maid. Why should the Liberian people be responsible for who cook for me when I make $15,000 or more already from them where I can afford to pay my own personal maid or my own personal driver? Why should I depend on government car when I can purchase one or two vehicles myself and use the money from what I make to maintain my vehicles? So I think it's a waste of money, but we, we can't have our cake and eat it too. If our lawmakers think that uh, government purchasing vehicle for them is more important than the income that they make, then they've got to make some adjustment. Okay, can we take $5,000 and then budget two point something million dollars in purchasing vehicles for our lawmakers? Well, we can, we can, we can cooperate that. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can work with that. But, but you can't be taking $15,000 or more Thirty thousand dollars in constituency, uh, constituency visit, and then you are demanding us to pay for your cooks, for your your gas, for all of these things. I mean, this is broad day robbery. If I was a lawmaker, just being a human being with with, with, with conscience, I would not accept this. I'm I'm sorry, I cannot sleep well knowing that I have everything that I want at the detriment of poor people, who I see every day. Then I take some of the money and say. I'm doing development in accounting. This is not how development works. This is not how the serious government work. And so I will stop the purchasing of vehicle. And this is a waste of money, uh, 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 Sylvester. You take $75,000 of the like, of taxpayer money. You bought a brand new car for a man who may have not even purchased seven or $75,000 car. Do you know how long our, our personal vehicle lasts in this country with us? Some people drive their vehicles for $30,000 for almost 10 years. So you're telling me every three years a $75,000 new vehicle is not good enough for a new minister to drive? That they have to go through a process to, to own them personally? Only for us to go back and budget to buy new vehicles again and then after three years? The government is six years, not three years. So what we are saying here is we're budgeting every three years for new vehicles. So within a, a term period, you, you spend almost $6 million or more on buying new vehicles, and there's no open process to ensure that those who are bidding for the, to own the vehicle being purchased by librarian people are actually paying through on them. So I will cut that stuff down. Lastly, for the other guys coming, do you think that in a serious world, in a serious world, do you think that people who make a hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in this country, uh, Larry talked about that, lawmakers are making less money in this country than they're making in Liberia, okay? But the government something benefits are good. I'd rather take three thousand, four thousand dollars and have a great health benefit than to take fifteen thousand dollars and live in a country where you have a sick kid. And all your money you make monthly, they can't kill you when you get sick. So our lawmakers are not thinking about this. All they are thinking about themselves. I will collect as much as I can collect monthly, as long as my house is built. I have a nice car, AC, good. Uh, um, I mean, this is ridiculous. So I will cut all of this stuff out. Either you take five thousand dollars. We buy you vehicle 
after your turn, you return the vehicle. We get that same vehicle, wash it, clean it up, put air freshener in it, give it to the next person that come in. If you don't like it, go buy your own vehicle. I mean, this is ridiculous, man. Professor, get in there. <laughs> let me see. Let me, let me, let me, let me give a short story. You know, when I came to America, I was in Rhode Island. So, uh, in Liberia, we have, a, we have a tendency where we invite lawmakers and big people to our program. So, I think we're on TPS. So, we're fortunate to get librarians. So, we invite Senator Jack Reed, Senator uh, Lincoln Shafi. We invite them to our program. You know, Biden's program having fundraised, all right? They put together <laughs> men gave 20, 20 bucks. We say, oh, but you think we see this? Senator, you call the senator me, right? Senator, the man come get twenty bucks. Say, ah, who senator? You make it twenty bucks. But only got to understand uh, uh, later on is that what do people do? The people when they are making appropriation, they put money in the budget for social services, certain social services, you know, for that will benefit the people. They don't take the personal money and use it. Now, what I noticed too in America, ninety percent of the lawmakers said. Who said that already million years before they before they run for run exactly. for the exactly already got money? So the people here, and when you check the people, I mean, just in my professionals. I was listening to the news uh, this morning. Body there alone, they, they already have raised 50 million dollars just for you one month for the like, 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 John Kerry. John yeah. Kerry has been a mortal, mortal millionaire. Yeah, for your wealth, the, the, the hands are yes, right. uh, catch up. To so professor, yeah. the, mm -hmm. is that, do you think if 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 the Position positions that we, that we, that we uh, run for, if it, it were very attractive, I think people will, people will, will gravitate towards it because people see that okay, Tom and Joy, they saw me on Broad Street. I, I know I had no car. I was walking in the sun. I was going to the Atai shop. We were making all the battle cry. By the time I became lawmaker, they saw me in one Jeep. So the next man say, then maybe Rao to that who who who, 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 who see me all view the see they say ah, so my man Georgie. And rouse that are running to. But do you think if they make this thing less attractive, people will people will run for it? Because I believe my 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 thing is that I think it should make government 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 jobs and less attractive that people will run for it and run to the private sector. Yeah, but what do you think uh, about cutting this budget and so forth? The only way you can make the government jobs less attractive if you build a vibrant private sector where people would be willing to go to the private sector as opposed to the government sector. In addition to that, you make the government sector in such a way that if you go in, you automate a lot of the processes so people are not holding cash in the government sector, right? Because when people get their hands on cash, money can disappear. We know money tends to walk a lot in Liberia. It will walk away from the, uh, the state coffers. That's what you do in order to help the country. I would trim the president and the vice president's budget by 5% right off the top. Let them lead by example. Because a lot of times the budget has a lot of fat and pork in it to say they're doing their own personal projects. Trim that, but at least 5%. Let people know that, hey, they're serious. By doing that, you set an example for the rest of the people that will follow. Put that money into tourism. The reason why I mentioned tourism, I know education, healthcare, all of those things are good. The reason I mentioned tourism is because if you have things like village tourism, you have things because over 70% of the poor people in Liberia, they're in the rural communities, they're in the villages. In other countries, people are do tourism to go to see how people, what village life looks like. By bringing tourists to village life, you are increasing the opportunity for people that are living outside of Monrovia to start benefiting a little bit. So I will change the whole dynamics of how things are operating. Rather than people have a little personal project, I will empower LACE, the Liberian Agency for Community Empowerment. I will put somebody competent in there because they work similar to you said, right? Put somebody competent in there to be able to get the job done. But Liberia doesn't do any of that stuff because we put our friends, our family, people from the same tribe, people who voted for us, those are the people there who are fighting for power right now. The fact that the president has seen nominated some other positions right now to trim the budget, I would not put anybody in doing those positions. I would do away with some of those positions. Maybe take people who are currently in the government and shift them to the position. Don't fill some of those positions. You will save yourself a lot of money over the long run. But again, we have a country where the political arena, the political space, it is so rigged that everybody wants to go into politics as opposed to go into the private sector, which by the way, private sector is not much existent, but the president can lead by example by trimming his budget, his office budget, the minister of state budget, the vice president budget. And in fact, 
cut all this foreign travel, let everybody get on a Zoom call or a Microsoft Teams call, and you can save the country a lot of money. Because if you try to convince the lawmakers, you're not going to get very far. <laughs> They're going to end up holding the country hostage. If you try to convince them to remove some of these perks, unless you galvanize the population to want to do this, the politicians are not going to budge on that. Because they're enjoying it too much, they're not going to want, to want want to let go. So I would start by maybe some of the uh, the other offices then, and see if the president can lead by example. So I will swing it back to you, Chief. But well, Chairman, Chairman Sevi, you know some of our friends that just got, just got elected, and some of our men who have been struggling, they got elected. Now they are telling, they are saying, you are going to wait till we get on the team before you all talk about your country. <laughs> nah, they are concerned, but everybody, it's like I mean, I picture myself. Uh, I, mm. I was a lawmaker, but then I saw I saw a Carlos Gray, I saw uh, uh, the other person in a brand new Jeep. And I said, I want I will be like that one day. Now I'm elected now. So I imagine myself in that in that SUV, that SUV. And when I get when I, when I go to to, to the Galabash, when I get on, when I get from the car, all my people around me, I, I move with two cars, convoy, and so forth. But but Chief Chairman, look. How you think what you do with the budget, the budget before you now to cut putting <laughs> the private priority zero? Uh, you know, I, first of all, let me say sorry to you guys um for for doing this show from the car, but it's such an important uh discussion that I thought I'd join. I right? I was on earlier, I had to bring my daughters for their catechism class, so I gotta stay until they finish. Cause I don't want to drive double, so I'm just gonna wait until the finish. But let me say this, you know, I, you know, I, I, I live with my big brother Larry and, 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 and uh, uh, I used to have that same optimism. I'm sorry to, to be the bearer of bad news here. I'm sorry to be a you know a party pooper. It don't have it ain't gonna happen. That's the reality. It ain't gonna happen because not that because it can't happen. It's not gonna happen because you don't have a country that is ready for this. You, if you, I dare you to attempt to do this, you will see citizens forming association for the protection of senators' benefits in the budget. You will see them yeah. holding placards. You will see them. Look, you know, Liberia, I, again, who's in power today? And this is where my friends get best with me. The Unity Party institutionalized this corruption in the Liberian government. They did. During Charles Taylor time. How many, how much money savers, how many, how much money uh, 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 senators were making? Because I won't go to do. I won't go to to do right during Taylor time. How many? How much? I think. I think that one of the only controversial thing, the only controversial thing I believe that happened with legislators during Taylor time. There's a company called I think OTC, but I don't know if people if you remember the body jeeps, the Azuzu, yeah. Azuzu trooper yeah. jeeps. Yeah, and at that time, and at that time, right? At that time. I think our jeeps were like 15,000 per, per, per jeep or something like that. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was a controversy. Imagine what's happening today. Yeah, but Chairman, let me interrupt you, Chairman. Chairman, let me interrupt you. Chairman, you just said something. Uh, what are, You just said something. Doing do do administration and tailor administration. The people are not rushing to be lawmakers. That's what, that, what I'm telling you, Dominic. Who are making, who, which, which representative or senator were making 15,000 during Taylor or Dota? So they didn't have any incentive. Nobody, the only people you saw going to the national legislature were people maybe Taylor Time was because of the proportional representation, right? So the, the, the MPP was the one who named her people in the, 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 the legislature, right? But it wasn't you didn't find every Tom, Dick, and Harry wanting to run right now, everybody working in their respective district to overthrow the next to overthrow the next representative. That is the yeah. intention, that is the aspiration in Liberia today. Everybody building hand pump. Everybody painting a school. Everybody doing it because guess what? They want to go to be called honorable. Like Cyril Allen always say, those people are not honorable people. It's the reverse. 
It is called the Honorable House of Representatives. It is also called the Honorable Senate, Liberian Senate. Your conduct in these institutions Makes will you determine if you are honorable or not. Liberia has become a joke, guys. We need to, look, let me tell you something. For you to solve a big problem, you got to identify that problem. For you to solve, if you got to, if you got to injure a wound on your, on your leg, you got to first clean that wound. The unity party, you are asking the current president of Liberia had a national, had a budget as vice president for 12 years, 12 years. I hear the president talking about asset recovery and audit. The first thing, if I were President Joe Boyka, I would say I'm starting on myself. We will commission an audit on the office of the vice president, starting from the time our vice president going to Joe Howard Taylor. People will take Joe, uh, uh, Joe Boyka serious. He's we not doing that. He's not going to do that. You know why he's not going to do that? Because he, he, uh, he, he enjoyed. That is the reason why. Why, when he came with that story about oh he was a pack car, <laughs> you heard Chewon Gonglo ask him why you didn't resign. Why you why didn't did resign? Chewon Gonglo ask him. Yeah. Why did you run again with Ellie when you said you were pack car? So yeah. my people, I keep saying this. We are not look at look at. Let me get you. Let, I'm going to end on this. Let, let, let look at the ball. Uh, uh, Tommy and George, have you heard the staffers? From the Senate protesting again, you know, yet in protest. Charles, Charles Brown or whatever. Because yeah, they enjoy, right? Charles Brown. They, they didn't enjoy. They were inspector. They were inspector. Yeah. The the man announced that tomorrow. It should have been tomorrow. Tomorrow the there protest. was going to be unspecified consequences. Watch and see tomorrow if the Senate, will, if the people will protest tomorrow. Hey, man, labor inspector now. So he, oh, he has been appointed labor inspector, right? So again. I am not going to cry more than the bereaf. <coughs> the Liberian people, look, this is like a this is, this is like a abusive spousal relationship. You know how you 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 in the relationship where either the woman beating you or or, or something happening or it's vice versa, and you said there. You said there. Okay. Because That's when you wake up in the morning, you so look at her, she look at you. You know, when you look at a woman, you she look at you, you look at her, you you know, you fall in love, or you say, they said, man, no, no more worry, honey, I'll buy you something. That is Liberia for you. The people of our country, are not, they're not ready. We're not ready. But they will make all the noise. I, like I said, I dare you. Tomorrow, you'll announce anything that looks like they're taking benefits from legislators. If you don't see different civil society groups sparking up, Association for the protection of this benefit, association for the protection of that benefit, because according to them, they are getting the largest. And I'm ben, sorry, guys. This, I'm sorry to be there. Ben, this that. is exactly Ben. This is exactly why I said the president and vice president and this the the the, the uh, uh, um, they have control of their own budget because you're not going to convince the lawmakers then to change the benefits they enjoy. It's never going to happen. Right. So if they're looking yeah, to but, get but rid it, of anything, but, but the president. Is but that's why I said, Larry. Exactly. That's the president. The president. Right the, president the president. Watch and it's see an the Ministry of State budget. Right. Watch and see this minute. Watch and see the the current. Watch and see energy part. Energy just get a budget. Watch and see that Ministry of State budget. Watch and see the but, president but, but, allowance. Watch and see the, 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 the money in the budget for the president for entertainment. Watch and see the money in the budget. Watch and see the budget. This is the man who ran on change. This is the man who said, George, we are was spending all the money. And that's why I say. And guess what? You know, one of the things that my friends in the United Party used to campaign heavily on? You know what they used to say? They said, Joe Boyka, oh, he ain't got no reason to, to, to want to, to live large. He ain't got no, no reason to want to live. Go to the president's farm right now. You are not even make it up. Go, go on the president's farm right now. That farm that was in Bomi. That two, a couple of months ago. Go there right now and see the splendor. That Liberia. And well, I'm not, listen, I'm not knocking the president. I'm not knocking the president. I'm just telling you the reality. I'm just telling you the reality. Because this is going to remain a circle. This is going to happen. And we're all just, me and I just now, we, we all there. We just looking now. 
We all look for next group ready for six years. Come on, can I say something? Go ahead. It doesn't have to remain a cycle. We can change it if we want to. But I just want to say something. My political leader is watching. Dr. Clarence Moniba, happy birthday to you, sir. Happy birthday. What's your name? Okay. Yes. Right. So, 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 so this is my political leader, Clarence. So, Dr. Clarence. So, so this is one thing that I noticed. He's a good friend of the show. Over the years. Good friend of the show. Happy birthday, Dr. Moneybag. You can't say I won't get to my point here. I mean, we ain't got much time. I want to go. Nobody did I stop anybody? Did I stop anybody? Grace, though. Happy birthday to you, sir, Chief. If only that Brimpo can see him, it will transform to the change to the new direction. Which that, that, was for, that was for 2029. Amen. That was for 2029. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was for 2029. Can I talk there? Yeah, that was for 2029. Yeah, go ahead. Talk down. Oh, I, yeah. I should say happy birthday to your uh, political leader, too. Yeah, please, please do that. Tell you to call the show and can't participate. Go okay. <laughs> ahead. But on a very serious note, though, my point I wanted to make here is something that I have noticed. In Liberia, a lot of our political or uh, not political leaders, excuse me, our uh, uh, elected officials, a lot of them don't have any perfection. It, it appears that most of them are e either humanitarians and they stay in the community, build hand pumps, and wait for their time to be elected. I'm going to use another person as an example. All right. I'm sorry I'm going to do this. What was Darius Dillon's profession prior to him extending to the, to the Senate? No, I, I'm just asking. Let's be what honest. Let me know. 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 Let me Please and, ask the question. No, you know, and I want to answer the question. We, we love to be hypocrites, right? We will see these guys. No, but I come in. Let me answer the question quickly. <laughs> you asked a question about Delon. Okay, go ahead. 10 seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Let me answer that you move our back. You are a politician. Advocate. Politician. Advocate. Politician. Politician. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I got a different style, but go ahead, Lofa. Politician. <laughs> and, and, you, and you said that with straight face. You look at God's not near you, he will slap you. Jeff no politician. <laughs> ben, ben was a politician. Ben was a politician. Ben, ben was a politician. You, you know what? Politics is not any kind of profession. To be honest with you, we as human, we mm -hmm. are born politician by nature. That's who we are. Because even in your place of employment, there is some sort of politics, office politics. Even in your home, no, we have uh, career politicians. Okay, and and, and here, here's the thing, right? You notice that most politicians in the United States, they are professionals who have worked in their area of expertise, and they will come with some idea of transformation. That is the complete opposite of what we see in Liberia. We see guys who are looking to drive nice car, and they are simply just pushing the idea of humanitarian work in the community, and the minute they get there, you realize that they had no agenda in the first place. Let President Joseph Numa Barakai, who came based on sympathy. He became the president based on sympathy. And here we are today. And so very often, people will simply sympathize with these guys because they've been in the community for so long. So they're not coming to the Senate or to the, uh, to the House of Representatives with any agenda to attack specific uh, uh, problems in the country. Instead, they're simply just coming there to have their fair chance, like Ben or uh, Rifle to say. And I think that's a problem. That's what our problem. Come on, let me throw it Come on, let me throw it Come on, let me throw it again. Come on, let me throw it But guys, again, on a serious note, right? 1997, we had 13 president running for, for president. 2005, we had how many again? I think we were 25. 2011, we were another 20. 17, we were another 20 something. So, but I, I think we will also be to also take the blame too for, for the problem our country facing because we wait again. We all complain now, right? We complain about this problem. We wait again. And then the, th the thing is that if you look at the people manifesto, 
look at every party look, look at the the, 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 the the platform it's almost the same he had all the parties so what, the you want to stop them from running no, no i'm not stopping that but but honestly but you stop them from running i'm not yeah, that, that free will but again too we should blame ourselves because guess what uh -huh. we, put, we, we all put ourselves we, put, we, go, we go to our separate ways what what are we going to come up with you saw what happened in the last election okay there were there were that would be good, great candidates running but again we, instead of saying look let all consolidate we stand beyond one person or, or so forth we all went separate ways and as a result we'll get the same the same results every time we do this so Tommy, guys we all no, that time so right now ben right now i told you i told you guys the other day about the movement to bring all Tommy, leave people man with your movement story man leave people yeah, here. let me let me say this I want to buttress what I want to buttress. I want to buttress what Lofa said, and I don't. I don't think. I think what Lofa said. I think you should listen very keenly. And every time I agree with Lofa, I want to say I don't always agree with Lofa. It's not about Dylan. I don't. It's not about Dylan. It's not about Dylan. But but when we talk about when 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 uh when uh when uh well you know what Ben. Say, let me talk about Dylan. Let me talk about Dylan. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me talk about Dylan. Uh, 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 that, you know, when people talk about, when people talk about, you see Ben there? You see how Ben chilling in his car? You see Ben car? Ben is not chairman of Liberty Party no more. Right? Ben, one way or the other, was able to bring himself to where he's at. Ben has a job. And as much as they accuse him of uh, living off of all the presidents in Liberia, Ben no longer works in government. When when when, when Lofa but talk I mean, about government for how many years? When, when Lofa <laughs> talk about people, politicians in this country, uh, having been professionals, having professional careers outside of politics, and then my friend said they are career politicians. I agree, they are career politicians, but career politicians also went to school to become something, either political science or whatever. But I'll give you an example. Barack Obama, when you ask what was Barack Obama's career as a professional, Barack Obama was a community organizer, but not just that. Barack Obama was a civil rights lawyer. On paper, professionally, yes, he's a politician, but he's a lawyer. He graduated from one of the one of the greatest Ivy League schools in this country. Like, like Benjamin Macron, right? Okay, exactly. Benjamin Macron, he's, he's not a politician, he's a political every, lawyer, every is, but he's he, not a politician per se, well, right? You want to talk about people like John McCain? John McCain was a oh was, was a was a military expert. He was he 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 you know a PO PO a POW right a person of war. A he veteran, served a his veteran. time. Veteran. You know you want to talk about Hillary Clinton? Hillary Clinton is a lawyer by profession, a top class lawyer. Bill, Bill Clinton. So the point that we're making here is it's not just about being. Let, look, if I be if I be if I decide to become a politician and run for office. I'm a professional hotel expert. I've worked for one of some of the biggest brands in the world. I'm a I'm an expert in my area of in my in my in my in my area of profession. I'm not just a politician, right? And so if I went to become a, a senator or lawmaker, I'm coming to that area with a certain level of expertise to help the private sector job growth in the area of tourism, right? For instance, right? But when you talk about Dylan and others, it's not just about Dylan, right? What kind of career politician is he? What did he ready to do? What did he ready to do outside of politics? If you take politics away from him right now, how can he earn it? How can he earn a living? Ben, where I will let you answer. If you take politics yes, away from them, most Dylan of Robert. these, most of these politicians right now, are Ben, how can they earn their living? How can they What's maintain that their lifestyle? Will, will, will Dylan be able to afford a, a business class, for instance, with his with his with his, uh, with his career outside of politics? And not just Dylan, a lot of these guys. Would it be able to drive eighty thousand out of car outside of politics? I can drive eighty thousand out of cars out of politics. I don't need politics for that. I can I can maintain my lifestyle because I'm a I'm a professional. So when you have these hungry people, a lot of the guys, the reason why Liberia have not transformed uh, Tumalin because we have we have we have elected hungry people, people who came from poverty. When you take a man who is thirty five years old, a man who have never earned two thousand five hundred dollars in his life every week or two on a two weeks basis and you give him fifteen thousand dollars the man is already getting old so you're looking at nine years or ten years as an opportunity to make up for all those 30 wasted years of not having no real job in the private sector so they're not thinking about the poor folks they're not thinking about the development of the country 
the thing about them, their own their belly. But if you take people like Alex Comis, Alex Comis is a professional. He's a multi-millionaire. He made his money in corporate America, in the private sector. You know he, he doesn't care about those $250,000 every month. He doesn't care about $100,000. He doesn't care about wiring, uh, driving $75,000 on a car. The man already owned a car that worth over two hundred some thousand dollars This is the stuff we're talking about. You yep. get real people who have seen money, who have lived life in the private sector and say, look, I want you to come and transform. This is the reason why we are where we are today, because we have elected people who are poor, people who have no exposure, and people who don't care about development. They are not career politicians. They are opportunists. And they have used the opportunity to become, to be, to be in the position they are right now, to, to, to drive themselves. Look at, that's on a note. All of the CDC folks who were in power before, all of these guys, what kind of lives did they live outside of government before? What kind of, I would respect a man who was selling two cars and became a, 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 a in government and have improved his life. At least outside of that, he was selling two cars. He had his own little thing going on. But a lot of these guys had nothing going on. You take away politics for them, they are poor. They'll become a zogo. That's what they'll become, begging for money, begging for beer, begging for car uh, for, to pay that rent. Government has given them opportunities that they would have never seen in the private sector. I don't respect that. I don't see them as career politicians. I see them as opportunists because this that's who they are. Wow. He's and in the famous crazy. words of my friend, John Lobo, show me the budget. And I know he's watching. You won't like this. I don't care. Show me the budget and I'll tell you where your priorities lie. We want to see the budget. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Professor Kennedy? Well, that, that quote is actually Biden's quote. But, <laughs> but well, here's the well, thing. No, but like, that, was, that was his famous quote now when he came to CDC. The budget, oh, gotcha. so the budget will tell you what that priority is. That, that Biden just said? Yeah, that Biden's quote. But here's the thing. Um, no, Lobo, no. Lobo, Lobo, you just said that. Oh. Okay. So here's the thing. Look, at the end of, to Robert's point, if you remove Dylan, you more than likely will end up with another Dylan because that's the society we have. It's plain and simple. I think this is the mistake, my point. This is my point. <laughs> I think the mistake we tend to make time and time again is we don't spend a lot of time understanding why the people voted for who they voted for. We wait six years. And then it's like a race to the Holy Grail. What you have to do at the end of the election, look, you need to take a survey of the people, whether they voted based on tribe, they voted because they like the person, they vote, it doesn't matter. Take a poll of the people and get a clear understanding of why they voted the way they voted. Collect that data and collect that data time and time again as time goes on. Because if you want to influence them, you'll be able to look at your list and say, oh, you know, this person in my TV or this group, in, this is how they voted. You'll be able to try to convince them based on the data you collected. The people in Nimba, we voted for Prince Johnson because of this. You'll be able to speak to them in their language based on that data. But we don't do that. We wait until five years from now, then everybody is rushing. And then it's like a crapshoot. You end up with who you end up with. Because maybe the person can sell their story based on their tribal affiliation, or people say, oh, it's that person's time, or people say, oh, you know, and that's how you end up in the same vicious cycle, and you cannot grow. There's no reason for that people to be poor. I keep saying this. The only reason you're poor is because you end up putting people in positions. They have no clue in terms of what they're doing. You talk about people who come to power in America. Look at people like the guy from Bain Capital. The guy who ran for president, uh, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney was worth hundreds of millions of dollars before he came to power, before he became a, a senator. If you bring people to power who were dirt broke, they're more than likely are going to steal and rip the country off because they try to get as much as they possibly can because they don't know if they will get reelected. So the system, and the only way you can change the system if you fix all these loopholes in the system. But more than likely when people come to power, they figure it's their time to enjoy. And I put that in quotes. It's their time to enjoy. So they would enjoy it right now until the next group comes six years from now and you go in this vicious cycle. Your GDP per capita, how much money each person earns in that country is under $800. Countries that were worse off than you, well, countries that were worse off than Liberia, they have come and surpassed us. 
They got way past us. Why? Because all of them did one thing. They said we hire people based on merit. We don't do that stuff. So I feel your passion, Robert. I feel your pain. If you remove Dylan, you're going to end up more than likely with another Dylan. Why? Because we're not bringing in politicians from Mars. We're bringing in politicians from the same society where they all seem to find themselves. So they all see how Dylan was, where he was before he got there and what he is now. And that's what you're going to end up with more than likely. So that's just a reality. You know, it's a reality. So, yeah. Guys, guys, I'm gonna. I, I, I was so uh, to, to have something I beg you. I was so log off, so I just want to end on this. I beg you just, uh, before I lose my train of thought. And this is not in defense of anybody or in defense of Dylan or anything. But uh, uh, like Larry said, I just want to piggyback on what Larry said. And I agree with Larry 100 because one of the things we, we keep doing in Liberia is we keep planting pepper and we're expecting to harvest okra, right? We have a society that has fundamentally has a problem. And that problem is we have created a patronage society in Liberia where everybody is dependent on government. Everybody sees government as the sole way, right? Look, I gave you an example, Musa Biliti, right? See some of the people who used to abuse Musa Biliti. Let's take this for a moment. Look at what Musa has done in the last two months. It almost like Musa has gone to the River Jordan. He's a Muslim, so maybe, maybe, yeah, because he, he, he it almost like he went to the River Jordan and John the Baptist baptized him. When you see some of the same people now who posting while are reading their comments, these are the same people who are calling Musa criminal. He was this, he was that, he was this, he was that. When Musa publishes assets, some of these people sitting and looking like, oh my God, right? I said to somebody the other day, somebody said, why you think other public officials have not published their assets? I said, because it will put them in trouble. Like who, you know what Musa can publish his asset? You know what Musa can publish his assets, right? Because Musa, you can, you, can, you can go back and you can trace what Musa, or how you are able to generate $32 million in assets or whatever assets Musa, Musa, Musa announced the other day. So my thing is, and imagine if the people of District Number 7 have bought a majority of the propaganda that was skewed against Musa. Do you know the kind of representation they would have denied themselves because of loud mouth people who ain't get nothing to stand on? They're talking. Some of the people you see insulting people say on Facebook in the name of politics. Sometimes you know when you know somebody when somebody abusing me, all I can do, I can just go on the picture, I click it. When I click the picture and I see them, I can just get weak. I know, right? I can just get weak. <laughs> somebody who even know where he's getting a next meal from, calling me a rogue. <laughs> so my <laughs> thing is. My thing is, we need to look. Listen, guys, whether we like it or not, it is almost, and, and the only way this thing will change, it has to come from the top. I have no confidence whatsoever at the bottom because we have, we have bred a society that is heavily dependent on the largesse coming from the top. So we will be able, if the day we get a leader or a president that is going to be able to make those hard decisions like what Larry said, come into office, slash my budget, do these different things, maybe that's when we may be able to make the break. Because you know what? Our people love to follow. They love to follow. So that's what I would say on that on that issue. On the issue of Dylan, under my 30 seconds, look, whether we like it or not, whether we agree or we disagree, right? Dillon is a product of our environment. Dillon is a product of our environment. I've Dillon, never agreed with you more than this. No, he is. He, he is, is a product of the environment. The envi and, wh and what is this environment I'm talking about? It is, the, it is this environment of advocacy, of loudness, of speaking, of, of because Liberians are a group of people who quick and they love to find heroes. We like to find heroes. Every day we're looking for the next hero. How did Dillon become a, 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 a senator? 
Because Dillon was technically, practically one of the only few people who were talking when George Weah became president. And guess what? Lofa supported Dillon. I supported You're right. Dillon. Robert you cannot say that Delo, with all of his shortcomings, have not, to a certain degree, been an effective senator. There are things Delo have done in that Senate. There are things that, yeah. because Delo has gone to that Senate, that I we agree. have never experienced, that has happened. Whether you the want to agree with him or not. The grandstanding? It's not about the Lofa. grandstanding. Lofa. 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 That's all that's all uh, Darius Dillon is doing around no, here. No, 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 but, 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 but before I bring Kevin, right? As I bring people Kevin, no, like right? Grace, Grace, Grace right? Grace it, was, it was through Dillon that people they call that executive session. People when they have sending tough votes, they go to executive yeah, session. They have a executive session. <laughs> 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 I've not noticed it yet. No, 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 let me say this. Let me say this. Right. Let me say this. Um, I don't think the society in 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 Liberia were wrong to to elect uh Darius Dillon. I don't think it was wrong. The society was wrong. Um, I disagree with that mentality that. You gotta be a lawyer. You gotta be. It's nobody vote for nobody because you gotta be a lawyer. The poor people of America vote for for Rag because he was a community organizer, not because he was a lawyer. He never sold his career. He sold his community and being a community organizer. Nowhere in this world, nowhere in the entire world, they they vote for somebody based on because of your career. Oh, yeah, mom. No, that's absolutely right. Uh, uh, I think you're Obama. contradicting us, though. But Oba absolutely wrong. Come on, guys, man. Don't protect Come on, it, it protect it. Let it, let it Come on man. I listen to you guys. Listen. Go ahead, Kev. You protect it. Uh, listen. Uh, um, let me let me see this. Barack was a middle class man. Wait, wait. Become president. He was not a millionaire. He was a middle class uh, a guy, so he, 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 you know, he was a regular guy. Guy, guys, it's not. I, I think it's unprofessional to 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 laugh with other people talking. I think I think you need to stop because we all we we all bring our idea. You see, this is the uh, uh, condescending behavior that 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 destroy Liberia because because you feel. Because they feel that people like Delon, right? Like people like 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 Delon, maybe uh, he's not that guy with that book. So no, he's not supposed to be there. I disagree with Delon policy. I think he was not effective. I think he's not effective. But I think one of the things we need to be talking about about Delon, not he is his background because he this because he that. We need to be talking about the issue. And the issue is there is there is a, a a corruption right now is creeping in public public works ministry, giving contract to people without the PPCC uh, 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 process. Now, the final minister saying he don't he, he doesn't have any idea, but now they gone back to PPCC try to get a uh, 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 document. They are awarding uh, contracts. Is I think that's what we need to be talking about. That senator should fly. I don't think we should be talking about. Okay, this person was a lawyer. He not 
uh, Delon, what Delon did, what Delon, no. I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the, the, the discussion. I think the discussion is what's happening right now. That's why we, we spent almost an hour talking about uh, Delon, who Delon is. You see, when a nation votes for you, at that time they voted for Delon, uh, the narrative were going against us. The people are looking for somebody. He came up with all the right message. I will do this. I will stand up. I will go in the Senate. Anything they say there, I will bring it also. Who will not fall for that? It will happen in any country. One of the reasons people people uh, uh, running behind Trump right now, because they feel he open. He can say things. One of the things that people uh, people like about Joe Biden, what well, Joe Biden was in the Senate, not because what Joe Biden education, nobody here talk about Joe Biden, because he was bombastic. When it come to when it come to the South Africa uh, 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 during the apartheid regime, Joe Biden was one of the few people that were, that was talking for for folks in South Africa. So they they know him. What you do speak. So I think we should be holding Dillon to what Dillon ran on and what he's doing now. And what Dillon doing now is contrary to what Dillon ran on, right? So that's what we should be speaking on. So maybe I stand to be corrected, but I, I heard Robert saying, you know, Barack was a lawyer, well life Dillon. I don't think that's necessary because at that time, that the, the that band they were on the street, the message were resonating. You want me to you want me to tell you why the people were on the street? You no, guys no, can please. tell you why. No, 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 please. So can yeah. I, can, can I, I come in? Ben, 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 let me repeat. Wait, let me let me repeat. Let me repeat because I I guess I I guess. There's something in our policy where you say something, people ready to defend. Let me repeat. I say at that time you guys were on the street, your message were resonating. That's what I said. Oh, okay. I ask okay. you why. I just want, I just want to make sure that's okay. you know. No, so, yeah. so and that's sure why. That's so that's why. That's why at that time the people voted for Delon, not because Delon uh, went to the best school or didn't go to the best school. Because nobody votes for somebody because they, they went to the best school. Yeah, that's, that's nobody the votes for somebody because nah. because they, they get money. No, no, no. Nobody in the whole yeah, war. No, nobody in the whole war. Yeah, but that's a better than. I'll bring. I'll bring. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you coming? Where are you coming? Yeah, Grace, come here. I'll come after. Yeah, Grace is in his office. Let me say something now. But on a serious note, right? Ben says something that maybe Sylvester and Grace can chime into it when they when they responding. Look, right now, right? We talk about hero right now. A uh, bugger is the president. Give six months from now, and things are things are going south. Somebody wants somebody start somebody start having a podcast and start making noise. Maybe that hero to come around as you. You know, okay. you know. Start maybe, noise. Say, hey, everybody, maybe it'll be better. Everybody will say, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> everybody will say, everybody will say, yeah. You see, Grace, she's saying the right thing. Grace saying the thing. I see now. I already get saying. Now everybody's not seeing now. Time Grace go on on her podcast. She said. I want for her to come before I start talking. Why? Grace start then we start hitting it, hitting every angle of the government. Okay, that was, because our, our country society that's how society is. People right now looking for opportunity for a time burgers out of blunder, they will, they will capitalize on it and they will hit it hard. That person start talking every day. They go to OKFM, go to uh the other the other the other program, come on on spoon, go to a closing argument all over the place and start making noise. That person now become the next hero. We start, we start to, cheer, to, to cheer that person up. But the, our problem is, we, as I said again, I repeat, until we come together, instead of being splinter group, we will have a problem all the time. But well, Grace, let's hear from you, Grace. You and Pee Wee. Yeah, I was just uh, I listened to what Kev says. You know, I, I understand where he's coming from. But you know, back in the day when we were in Liberia, when they were doing this Liberia, they used to say you have. To, they said this thing. There was a statement out there say, "You have to have criteria to be called Miss Liberia." So there should be. We're not talking here. I don't think Kakwa was trying to say uh, about education so much. 
but we have to have certain standards that will equivalent you to sit in certain position in our country. Like Tom Lee was saying that he said, oh, you know, everybody was running with all this, the people have all these uh, 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 presidential candidates running the race and they could just list together. But how in the world that you want us to collaborate and be inclusive with the educated and the uneducated people? When the uneducated people want to take over the educated people and say, you know what? You should be on us instead. How in any in the world that anybody will go to school for the amount of years that some people are going to school for and will want to be on somebody just because you love Muff Tucker and then you should lead and I'll be on you and teach you for what I have learned? Nobody will want to do it. That's why killing the country. Because we are not letting the people to have our, our government don't have certain standards for certain position that the people are supposed to get in the position with those standards to deliver to the country what they're supposed to deliver to the country. Jalen has not been effective in the in, in the in the in the in the Senate. He has done nothing. I told people this man was not going to do anything for that. He has not passed any bill that, that he has solicited on the floor for the bill to go through for, to benefit our people. So therefore he has not done anything. It, it, that, thing, it, that was not from Delon. Delon That's opposed not. that bill. From really? Really? Yeah, the from Delon. In fact, Delon feared the dual citizenship because he did exactly. not want competent librarians to come to compete with him. I'll respond to Kevin. So, so, so these are the things that we are saying that the people, when they get there, because they don't have that level, that standard that's supposed to be able to give them the weight to go and fight for our people in the way they're supposed to fight for our people. They get there, they just say, you know what? I'm here now. And I, I will just do what I have to do to get my own money. And we are not going to continue uh, uh, for Liberia to run like this. I am not going to come and, and, and have experience in my education. And then I come say, oh, no, or Delon, who they say he never even got a high school diploma and he should leave me. And, no, and he got a high school diploma, man. He <laughs> make a high school diploma. And we never saw it. Go <laughs> ahead. He make a high school diploma. Um, uh, uh, so for the, for the, you know, I'm... Um, before, let me say for the record, I was part of the Friends of the Law. He contested for us in 2009, and I, we all supported him uh -huh. then. Um, uh, and, and no, I, need, I need to come over and say that I was part of it, and I don't regret taking that decision. 2009, the Friends of the Law, when he first contested, we went out with canvas for him across the line. But one thing I will say here, and part of the reason why I supported the law, now, there is an open process, even here in America. People learn via the process of apprenticeship. Delon learned to apprenticeship when he worked with the former Solicitor General of the Republic. He's a good, yeah. Delon was one of those that could articulate the Constitution and the governance bureaucracy very eloquently. And at the time, some of us good on job. the level of the, uh, the University of Liberia and other things, I admire him for that process. And I was told by my professor, Larry Topa, folks do learn from apprenticeship. Senator Richard Flomo, for instance. The late senator Francis Glauber, for instance, he didn't, those people didn't graduate from the law school, but I wanted to part of the best lawyers in Liberia. They learned from the courtroom. So I'm one of those individuals that do believe that the law is a systematic, it's a chronological, eloquent young, I mean, an individual. I don't want to call him young now because he learned the process of the law through apprenticeship and the constitution. And via that qualification, he was also qualified to be. A politician a profession now having said that the constitution of our country is very clear in setting the basic criteria as to who would be senator and, and, and representative the constitution says to be represented you should be 25 years old and have an incumbent mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. of twenty five thousand. yeah true the, Senate, the constitution is also clear it says you should be 30 years old with an incumbent property of twenty five thousand. and it is say you should be a lawyer you should be a high school graduate or blah, 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 blah. I'm coming back to say back here in the U.S., we elect George Santos, <laughs> who, is, who is a pathological liar. We elect him in here in the U.S. That's not all. In the U.S., less than 8% of those, I mean, less than maybe 8% will have the line of being a millionaire. Many people say this, less than that. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to say to you, we let those people as their the Constitution of the United States of, uh, of uh, America, what the Constitution says after how one gets elected here and there. So our Constitution, the Constitution of the Republic of Liberia, set the basic criteria as to who gets elected, where, how, and when. And basically, that's the set of now. Even the President of the Republic of Liberia, 
It did not say you should be a, even a high school graduate. It didn't say that. It didn't say that. So my own point that in most of those that didn't go to school, the academic school, or they didn't enter tertiary institutions, they were part of the best law maker for my end, reading back through the line. For instance, the late Tanda Poli. Oh, yeah. The late Tanda Poli didn't go to school. He didn't go to academic school. But he was the justice of the peace. Via that same process, he learned the Constitution very effectively. And he used that to execute the process about the, the lawmaking law process, for, for instance. He was very good in how he would puff up bills in the national legislature. Tanapori died as an honorable man. And let me know respect to him. You can remember the thing when it came to the 500,000. This on the bed, you can recall the the how they call the 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 the, the army worm situation that came out. The army worm, yeah. Was, yes, would the papa handle that? So basically, for me, folks, I would love for us to set by the the, the, the standard our constitution set, and that is the standard. That's the gospel of the country. That is the, the standard that we have to use to move the process power. So I believe that Delon and the rest of the folks that are there, like the leg of the Thunder Poli and the Omen I used to call, he say, uh, I can drink smoking Jew. I, I don't forget. Any, Bono uh, uh, He said, I'm not Bobo. I'm not Bobo. And you hear that, right? So, I mean, that's the line, that's the standard line of our country, right? And until we can go back and overhaul the Constitution and begin now to put that, say, hey, to, to be a lawmaker, you have to be, uh, you have to be uh, a graduate of the University of Liberia, or you have to be this person or that person. But basically, in our country, you know, our economy is not as big, so we don't have too much rich people there. No, we don't have a lot of them. It's the standard, but it's the sincere nature of our commitment. And if we were to say we setting our manifesto on the basis of this, my manifesto is to go and canvass for the transformation of this as we respect that promise to the people of Liberia. And that's what they don't did. Part of the thing they don't, they, they don't revolutionize the Liberian Senate. He has posed out of thing. Most of the things in Liberia were more bureaucratic. He revolutionized our institution. He brought the debate. He may, not effectively, doing 100%. Yeah, he, he may not effectively put on a light, but he brought the line to expose a lot of things. So then, a lot of things open up in Africa because of Darius Dolo. Yeah, but then right. he brought, he actually he exposed okay. it. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, so, so let, me, uh, let, me, uh, let me just respond here quickly. Yes. yes. I, I brought DeLon in, in, in the conversation, and I mm -hmm. guess DeLon Defense Force wants to discuss the issue of the law is the defense force. The no, force. Yeah, please, no, please restart. Ask them, restart. Ask them, please. What that is the man? Why you got to have that first year with it? Come on, retard is the man. You're not going to be all right. All right, all right. They're not, they're not the law. The law, let's get a journalist and teach you. We try yeah. to take it back. Take it back. All right. All right. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. You can proceed. I will. You can proceed. No, but on a very honest note, uh -huh. I don't think a single one of us, and I don't think in, in, in uh Robert ever said constitutionally uh, uh electing DeLong was the wrong thing. No one spoke against the constitution. All right. We are simply speaking based on precedence. We are looking at the records. We are saying to ourselves why we are here in the first place, why we find ourselves in the position where lawbreakers, as you refer to them as lawmakers, are not impacting the change that we want in Liberia because they actually were elected for several odd reasons. Some of them simply because of popularity, not based on their agenda, what they can actually implement. That is our point. And we are saying again to Kev's point here, talking about nobody elects people based on your profession. Maybe if you had a profession and you were elected to the Senate, you have an idea and you have identified specific areas in society that you want to impact. That's what we are saying. We go, I see, uh, you know, Pee trying to say, oh, there were other people who were very effective. You know the reason why 170 some more years today we are embarrassed of our country where we are? It's because of those same people you want to sit here and talk about. They have done great jobs. I disagree with you. I vehemently disagree with you. Had they done good, we would have been competing with our neighbors. We would have been far ahead. 
It is because of those individuals who simply were in on, in the interest of their own pockets. That's why we are here today. That's why our healthcare sector is in a deplorable condition. That's why our security sector is so deplorable. That's the reason why justice does not exist in Liberia. Because the precedents were not set. And that's the reason why we say the likes of Darius Delon and other people who people trusted. Because he advocated at some or, or, or time. We thought that he would actually be the eyes of the people. Darius Delon spoke against having to take cars that worth $45,000. He told us, when I get to the Senate, I will advocate for salary reduction. Since Darius Delon got there, where are we with the salary reduction? Darius DeLong told us several things that he would bring to the surface. Today, we don't see those things. And we would not simply sit here and try to do friends and brother or colleagues kind of thing. Liberia deserves better. And that's why we are holding people. We must raise the bar. We must raise the bar higher than where we are today. And we cannot say we will justify it based on the Constitution. Yeah, let me give one program note. Uh, the, the guy just, the signal, the studio just informed me we, for, for maintenance purpose, we have 30 minutes. So, uh, we, we can just start winding down. So we give you what's on your mind. At least everybody speak for three minutes, and then uh, we can we can call your day. Kev, please hand hand out, hang in that, that come back, man. Let me let me let me respond to Kev. I think Kev. I think first of all, and I think uh, Lofa just alluded to that. I think we have to put in context what the conversation was about, right? I, I don't think the conversation was about uh, class. I don't think the conversation was about uh, elitism. I don't think the conversation was about who is more educated and who is less educated or social status. I don't think I don't think that's what it was about because if we're talking about education and class, uh, I would say that uh, I, I, I consider myself a poor boy, right? My my mom, my dad, they, they come from very poor backgrounds, uh, but. Um, they are where they are today because of hard work and seizing moments and seizing opportunities. So I would never, ever look down on anyone. Some of my closest friends uh, come from nothing. And uh, they are my buddies today, not because of uh, what they bring to the table financially. It's because of quality. Uh, and so I would never insinuate or look down on anyone. And so I don't think that's what the conversation was about. I never for once mentioned the education of Dylan. I think what we're talking about, we're talking about, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, not making the kind of uh, reform and the changes uh, in the interest of their constituents and that of the country by large. And we talked about how we are hiring people who come from nothing. They had nothing prior to government and they're using the government's position for economic gains, right? And that's what we're talking about. And so and so this had nothing to do with who is middle class and who is not middle class. But here is what I will say, Kev. I will mention to you Fatou Kekula. Uh, Fatou Kekula. Fatou Kekula was a young nurse who became uh, a very popular figure during the Ebola crisis when she was very innovative to use plastic bags for uh, protection uh, gear. 